It had long been evening outside, but the light from one of the windows of the student dormitory illuminated the dark street. Frantically clutching his cell phone in his hands, Michael could not believe that he had just received a message from his girlfriend with information about the end of their relationship. He made his last attempts to establish communication, typing message after message, and talking about how good they would be together. But this did not change the girl's decision, and in the end, Michael saw that she had blocked his contact. Noticing Michael's strange behavior, his roommates asked if he was okay, to which the young man replied something not entirely intelligible. But a moment later, Michael suddenly hit the table with his fist as hard as he could. And without saying a word, he stood up and quickly left the room, dropping his chair and half-eaten Chinese noodles, and his neighbors already realized that their friend had been abandoned once again. Where this time it was one of the beauties of the Institute, Veronica, who broke off relations with Michael. Meanwhile, Michael had already managed to reach the place where they intended to meet and discuss everything before the girl sent him a message about the breakup, where he was still lucky to meet the dazzling Veronica. Remembering the joyful beginning of their relationship, the young man holding out a bag of goodies began to persuade the girl not to end it, claiming that he was ready to change, if something doesn't suit her about him. But the merciless girl did not leave him a chance, saying that they did not hold any grudge against Michael, but simply realized that her ex-boyfriend needed more and wanted to get along with him. Such a statement greatly hurt the young man, who would have been ready to accept his imperfection, but could not believe that he had given in to another, and not the best option, who had already managed to deceive Veronica several times in the past. At this time, a luxury expensive car pulled up to the side of the road. The side window on the passenger side rolled down, and the man sitting behind the wheel smugly invited the girl to sit in the cabin. Veronica did not keep her waiting, and finally told Michael that it was better for them not to meet again and not communicate at all. After these words, the girl got into the car and the car quickly sped off, taking with it the last hopes of the young man and leaving him completely alone on the streets of the night city. After thinking for a few minutes, Michael threw away the goodies he had bought for Veronica and walked away. He walked around the city at night for a long time and finally decided to go to the supermarket. Washing down his grief with mineral water, the young man thought about why girls generally don't appreciate the sincerity of guys. He didn't know where to take out his anger and squeezed the empty bottle with all his might. Rage and anger literally overwhelmed his entire being, and Michael decided that he would no longer behave politely and follow the girl's lead, but would make them run after him. And then something happened. Some voice from outside first said that the connection to the master system was completed. Then a transparent screen appeared before the young man's eyes, on which his name was written. Information about the absence of enhancements was contained, and the account balance was listed as $90 billion. Shocked by what was happening, the young man tried to touch this screen, and at the same moment heard an indignant female voice calling him a pervert and pointing out the need to watch his hands. Michael, who had not yet come to his senses, tried to figure out what was happening around him. And finally, he saw the dissatisfied face of the girl, who was now saying that the young man was not all right in his head, and the voiceover announced the name and age of this girl, and also announced that her relationship to Michael was minus 50 points. Until now, Michael, unaware of anything, simply stood there, his mouth open in surprise, and the voice continued, saying that he needs to spend money on girls, and as soon as the girl's attitude rating towards Michael reaches plus 96 points, she will become his fan. From what he heard, the young man experienced an even greater shock and could not believe that just like that he was given 90 billion and told to spend it, and meanwhile the voice asked the question whether to launch the game, warning that this money can only be spent on girls. But after the unknown person said that the master would get back a tenth of what he spent on the girls, and that additional skills would appear, the young man's answer was already predictable, where he immediately set his first goal. Putting on his most good-natured face, Michael told the girl not to be angry for his behavior, and in order to compensate for her bad mood, he was ready to buy whatever she wanted. While the girl listened to Michael's words, a voiceover announced the successful activation of the game and said that the reward for completing the action would also be gain points, 
which can be spent on improving one's strength, dexterity, and spirit. Having heard the cherished words about shopping, the girl did not really believe that such a nondescript guy had at least some means, but she stated this, just in case, with caution and a touch of humor. Michael examined the slender body of Angelica, who was listed at the Institute as the first beauty of the art department. And without hesitation, he answered that the girl should just try to ask and not throw around words out of ignorance. After these words, the girl said that she wanted to treat all the students of her faculty, and therefore she needed financial help. She thought to herself that this beggar was simply trying not to disgrace himself in the eyes of others, and she needed to disgrace him. But before she had time to finish her thought, she received a notification on her phone that $1,000 had been transferred to her account. This forced Angelica to voice the amount, which attracted the attention of supermarket visitors, while Michael stood there and thought that $1,000 was not such a big amount. The pleasantly surprised girl concluded that she had come across a real rich man. Such a fat wallet definitely could not be missed, and Angelica had already formed an action plan. Turning Michael's phone towards her, she quickly added herself to him as a friend on the social network with quick movements of her fingers, and then almost getting close to the face of Michael, who had not yet gotten used to his new role, the girl said that she wanted to take a walk with him to the same place, where she would see how long he would last. The Evening City lived its own vibrant nightlife. Heading to one of the most expensive boutiques, Angelica said that she was not a materialistic girl at all, but wanted to understand how serious the young man was towards her. And Michael only thought that the more money she spent, the greater his own winnings would be. So the words about seriousness and commercialism did not really bother him. Michael said out loud that he was ready to do anything for Angelica, and she could choose any things without denying herself anything. They were already inside the boutique when the newly rich man, looking at women's handbags, suddenly heard a very familiar voice behind him. It was Veronica who, standing in front of her old new boyfriend, tried on a new handbag, Michael looked carefully at the face of the one who just a couple of hours ago exchanged him for another and abandoned him in the middle of a dark street. Michael loved this girl and notes of true sadness now crept into his soul. Noticing the young man's attention towards the other girl, Angelica quickly reminded herself, saying that now was probably not the time, since his ex was here. To which the young man replied that this could not interfere with them at all and the girl could calmly continue to choose things for herself. Satisfied with the successful circumstances, Angelica turned to the consultant with a question about the availability of a fashionable handbag for sale, which was the subject of everyone's attention at the spring show of new models. To which the consultant responded positively, saying that the last such handbag was now being tried on by another girl, pointing in Veronica's direction. At that moment, Veronica noticed Michael and, thinking that he was continuing to pursue her, decided to teach him a lesson disgracing him in front of everyone in the store for being a beggar. Turning to her boyfriend, whose name was Mason, she asked if he remembered that she would have a birthday soon. To which Mason noted with surprise that the girl celebrated her birthday quite recently. To which the resourceful Veronica stated that then there was a holiday according to the lunar calendar, and now she will celebrate her birthday according to the solar one. Mason, who found himself in a hopeless situation, began to say that he did not like materialistic girls and asked if Veronica was with him now for the sake of money. This statement took the girl by surprise and she could not find what to answer. At that moment, Angelica approached her from behind and carefully took the purse in her hand. Taking advantage of the girl's confusion, Angelica took her purse with a light and agile movement. And Michael, without wasting any time, paid for the purchase at that very moment. And while the satisfied girl was enjoying the new thing, the voiceover announced three times that she was adding plus 20 points to the girl's position. Michael also beamed with happiness, having immediately received plus 60 points just for buying some kind of handbag and deciding that at this rate it would not be difficult to achieve the desired result. At the same time, he mentally noted that his personal financial benefit from the transactions could have been greater. Looking at the homely-looking rich man in the face of Michael, the store consultants recalled the words of the director that one should not be biased towards people based only on their appearance, and Veronica, who had lost her purse, stood with her eyes lowered to the floor. Angelica, on the contrary, was happy, 
noting that both the purse and the guy with the money were now taken by a better owner than Veronica. She looked in fascination at the simple guy looking at the handbags and again came to the idea that this jackpot should not be missed. Approaching Michael, she gently grabbed his hand and began to thank him for his generosity, calling him dear, which the young man did not expect and was a little embarrassed. Veronica looked at this whole scene with tears in her eyes. Saying that this young man's behavior had crossed all boundaries, Veronica pushed Michael away and rushed out of the store. But he mentally noted that this was just the beginning. At that moment, a familiar voice announced that Veronica is the second object, and currently her attitude towards the master is minus ten. Listening to this, Michael watched as Mason took off from his seat, and he ran after the girl rushing away from the boutique, where none of the participants in the action heard how Michael was promised a reward of 20 gain points when Veronica's attitude towards the owner reaches 96 points. And Angelica, who did not miss her chance, clung to the young man, asking where they would go now, to which Michael, who had a taste of the game, replied that only where he could spend money, since he would never believe that one handbag would be enough for a girl. In one boutique, Michael pointed out the most expensive dress. In the other, for the most elegant and incredibly expensive jewelry. And everywhere he invariably paid with the very card that appeared to him after he agreed to participate in the game. Being in some kind of positive state of shock, Angelica, of course, did not hear how the voiceover announced that her disposition towards the master had improved by another five points. Buying new expensive perfume, and another five points are added to your favor. Then the cosmetics department, and again five points added to Angelica's location. Numerous clothing boutiques also invariably added favorability points. Finally, the girl herself said that she's probably had enough this time, because all this simply won't fit into her small apartment, to which Michael simply replied that this was not a problem, since he would immediately buy the girl a new spacious apartment. However, the girl suddenly said that this would somehow be too much, because this was their first meeting, where she just wanted to joke, and Michael was immediately announced that the girl's favor had dropped by minus five points. This forced the young man to be distracted from searching for an apartment, where he came to the conclusion that the application to purchase an apartment was indeed unnecessary, and only frightened the girl. He quickly found himself approaching Angelica and naming her full details the department where she studies, her favorite color, zodiac sign, favorite food, and favorite movie, which left her completely confused. Then he said that he was very passionate about her, which made him behave so recklessly. Having finished his speech, he turned to the store consultant and asked to open an account in Angelica's name, where he would deposit $50,000 and asked to offer her only the best the next time she visited the store. And again he turned to Angelica, saying that in this way he hoped to make amends to her for his bad joke about buying an apartment. Blushing from everything that happened for one minute, the girl stood unable to say anything, and Michael, who continued to play his role, came close to her and whispered in her ear that if the girl was embarrassed by his gifts, then she could offer him something in return. This had the desired effect, and the girl finally came to life, pushing the young man away and jokingly calling him a pervert, which prompted the announcement that plus 30 points had been added to the girl's favor. Michael, not noticing the admiring glances of the consultants, literally ready to throw themselves on his neck, concluded that if you are rich, then you will get away with anything. And Angelica suddenly asked why the young man shouldn't think about himself after he bought her so many gifts to which Michael simply and without a twinge of conscience replied that he did not have money to buy things for himself. The dazzling Angelica gently took the young man by the hand, and saying that now it was her turn to give gifts, pulled the young man along with her, looking at him with an alluring gaze. First the girl took him to boutiques with men's clothing, and then they started doing the young man's hair, and so after all these manipulations, a completely different person appeared on the street. Angelica enthusiastically noted how attractive this young man really is, and Michael himself said that he now feels somehow strange and not very confident, to which Angelica, approaching the young man, said in a gentle voice and with no less gentle movements that there was nothing strange, and they made a very beautiful couple. But then she let go of his hand and began to move away. Throwing a goodbye kiss, the girl said that they would see each other later, 
and that she was so happy today that she almost decided that she had fallen in love. And Michael was told that according to the results of today's meeting at Angelica, her disposition had become plus 68 points. There were fewer and fewer illuminated windows in the dorm. Opening the door to the room, Michael entered, shining like a new scent, whose appearance made his neighbors surprised. When asked what he was doing all this time, Michael replied that he went on a date with Angelica, to which his neighbors began vying with each other to be indignant that he had not yet decided anything with Veronica, but was already dating Angelica, who, moreover, was the first beauty of her faculty. Then one of the guys approached Michael and said that Angelica was not a girl on his level, where the young man did not have enough finances for her, and was immediately awarded gratitude from Michael for his friendly advice. After listening to his friend, the young man began to read new messages, where Veronica wrote that she chose Mason only because her mother was now sick and she really needed money, and without hesitation he transferred her $10,000. At the same moment, in the women's building of the dormitory, an exclamation of surprise sounded so loud that it was heard far beyond the dormitory. That was the surprise of Veronica, who stated that as soon as she mentioned the money, Michael immediately transferred the required amount. Her friend asked if this was the same Michael with whom Veronica broke up, to which the latter answered positively and added that she needed to get rid of Mason, who couldn't even buy her a bag and take Michael into circulation. She began quickly typing one message after another on her cell phone. She asked where the young man got so much money, what kind of relationship he had with Angelica, and whether he still had any feelings for her, for Veronica. Meanwhile, Michael, having heard the announcement that a plus five had been added to Veronica's disposition, began to think that Angelica turned out to be not as selfish as Veronica. Deciding not to answer the girl for now, the young man began to look for places where he could still spend money on girls. And so he found what he needed, an online broadcast of one famous blogger, Marinda, who accepted financial assistance for herself. Michael's joy knew no bounds, because he found himself in the right place to spend a lot of money, which he did not hesitate to do. Having seen the transfer from a user under the name Lone Wolf, Marinda, not yet familiarizing herself with the amount, sent him words and a token of gratitude. But when the amount was shown on the screen, not only the blogger girl was shocked, but also everyone who was now watching her online broadcast. The comments from the audience were not long in coming, noting the appearance of a rich man here and asking him to give him some money. But instead of responding to these meaningless comments, Michael decided that it would be nice to make another translation and pressed the appropriate button on the screen of his mobile phone. Meanwhile, in the office of the online broadcasting company, where Marinda worked, a real commotion began. The project manager literally flew into the boss's office without knocking, and with a wild expression on his face, shouted that some rich man had just transferred one million dollars to Marinda. The boss's reaction was not long in coming, where he suggested that this was either fraud or money laundering. Meanwhile, other girls who also conducted online broadcasts from this company vied with each other to try to write to the lone wolf, telling each other how this rich man had just transferred a million to Marinda. Marinda herself could not believe that she had just received a transfer of $1 million. The director did not hesitate to appear, who with signs indicated the boss's instructions to take this rich viewer into circulation. But Marinda stated that she could not talk about it, since she herself would not let such a goldfish go anywhere. After blowing a kiss, the girl told the lone wolf to send her a private message so that she could receive her well-deserved gratitude. But the lone wolf did not respond to either this or any of the following messages because Michael had long since fallen into a sound, healthy sleep. A new clear and warm day arrived, and the first rays of the sun illuminated the walls of the men's dormitory. Having woken up, Michael lazily read the correspondence in the general chat about how a certain rich man had appeared in online broadcasts yesterday. And while the young man was washing his face and brushing his teeth, he noted that his transfers yesterday had no effect on Marinda, because there was no notification about adding her to the system, nor about the accrual of favor points. He was just thinking that probably, in order for the system to recognize a new girl, a personal meeting was needed when he discovered a huge number of messages from various girls who offered to meet him. However, almost immediately he noticed the commotion his comrades were making as they left the room and asked what had happened. 
to which they explained to him that they were rushing to an open lesson in order to have time to take the best seats, which would allow them to fully enjoy Jessica's beauty. She was an incredibly beautiful girl whom literally all the guys at school dreamed of. And Michael also remembered this girl in great detail, the location of which all the university guys dreamed of. After all, Jessica was famous as a very educated and cultured girl, developing literally in all areas. She was the chairman of the Students' Association. Her musical talent for playing the piano left no one indifferent. Jessica did not lag behind in more dynamic sports, where she diligently studied ballet and became a state champion in fencing. While Michael was turning over in his head all the merits of this university beauty, he was noticed by students sitting nearby, who assumed that he had transferred from another group since they had not seen him here before. But the young man didn't care about them. He was thinking about how to establish contact with Jessica, who constantly keeps only in her own company, and for three years no one has managed to even just talk to her. And then Veronica and her neighbor noticed him, where the neighbor, whose name was Inga, noted that Michael had dressed up well, which was probably intended to please Veronica. And at the same moment, it was announced that plus 10 points had been added to Veronica's disposition. Glancing sideways in the direction where the girl was, Michael noted to himself that Veronica was really some kind of superficial woman, since her position improved only because he had dressed up a little. But throwing away unnecessary thoughts, the young man tried to focus on how he could meet and add Jessica to the system, from which he was distracted by loud exclamations from the left side of the audience. It was one of the guys who suffers from excessive self-confidence and arrogance who loudly declared that he was about to get Jessica's phone number. Jessica's attention was also attracted by such statements, which made her very surprised. But she didn't even have time to say a word when a self-confident guy, whose name was Greg, was already nearby and invited the girl to get to know each other better and exchange contacts. But his unceremonious actions only confused Jessica herself, but her roommate who was nearby was not very pleased with this behavior of the young man. Greg, without wasting any time, moved closer and closer to Jessica, saying that they would be a good couple and they should start dating. But suddenly, with a sharp movement, someone's hand pulled the guy away from the girl. It was Jessica's roommate, Kate, who raised her hand over the guy's head, accompanying her actions with the words that he should not dare to come close to her friend. Watching the sharp end of the pen above his head, Greg began hastily making excuses that he just wanted to join the student association, and Kate misunderstood him. Saying that this was the stupidest excuse to approach the girl, Kate sent the failed gentleman away. But not even a few seconds had passed before the attention of both girls was attracted by another voice, asking Jessica to add him as a friend on a social network, which surprised them a lot. It was Michael, who had already prepared his phone for exchanging contact information. Kate noted out loud that this guy was at least cute and sarcastically inquired about his intention to join the student society. But Michael said as honestly and openly as possible that he was not at all concerned about all these student associations, which prompted the question of why he needed Jessica's contacts at all. Delaying the moment of answer, the young man first said that this should be more than obvious to everyone. But without making much of a pause, he immediately added that he just wanted to date Jessica. Jessica immediately blushed at what was said and didn't know how to respond to such frankness. Moreover, all the people in the audience were shocked by Michael's directness. The result of this frankness was not long in coming and was extremely unexpected for everyone, where the unapproachable Jessica suddenly took out her phone and said that she wouldn't mind trying. Veronica looked angrily at everything that was happening, where Inga, standing next to her, added fuel to the fire asking the girl whether Michael should be her personal dog and run after her all the time. Meanwhile, Michael, enjoying the victory, concluded that simply that in communication it was not so bad and had just borne fruit. And suddenly there was an announcement that a new target had been added in the person of Jessica, whose location was currently equal to zero. At the end of the lecture, Michael and his comrades and neighbors left the educational building, where the young people accompanying him expressed words of congratulations regarding the establishment of relations with Jessica. They asked him, after closer communication with her, to introduce them to her friends, to which Michael replied that it was too early to think and talk about it. A rather rude call made the young man turn away from the conversation and turn around. 
It was Greg and his henchmen who expressed his misunderstanding and dissatisfaction with how Michael managed to get the contact of the first beauty of the university. To which the young man simply replied that Greg should not embarrass himself now more than what had already happened in the audience. This statement infuriated Michael's opponent, but his impulse towards physical violence was restrained by his comrades, recalling the words of the police after the last arrest that next time they would face prison. Michael was about to continue on his way when his attention was attracted by the familiar voice of Angelica, who said that she had been waiting to meet him for a very long time. This statement by the first beauty of the Faculty of Arts shocked everyone on the street. And Michael, without being at a loss, said that in order to compensate for the girl's weight, he would treat her to dinner. But the girl refused dinner and asked if the young man liked the way she looked with the things he bought her, to which Michael noticed that she looked simply amazing, especially with that handbag. Veronica listened to all this, huddled among the crowd of students, feeling feelings of jealousy and annoyance raging inside her. Meanwhile, Angelica took Michael's arm, and together they walked away from the walls of the university, continuing their dialogue and leaving behind the shocked crowd. And Greg, also watching what was happening, literally with tears in his eyes, wondered what was wrong with him. Veronica couldn't stop her tears either, asking herself many questions, including why Angelica was better than her and why Michael made such a choice. The time was approaching evening, and the sun gradually began to sink lower and lower. Angelica suddenly stopped her movement and, turning to face Michael, showed him her recent work. It was a portrait of Michael, where the girl explained that she had stayed up late to finish it. She insisted that the young man take the gift, where she stated that she would not forgive him if he threw away the portrait. The young man was shocked by this attitude because this was the first gift from a girl in his entire life. Satisfied with the reaction, Angelica smiled sweetly and asked if the young man liked the portrait. For a while, Michael just silently looked at the portrait, not showing any emotion. But gradually, some thoughts began to form in his head. He remembered the girl's previous attention to him regarding his clothes and his appearance, the air kiss, and now this gift, and decided that these were just tricks on her part so that he would fall into her network. The young man concluded that Angelica specially developed such a plan immediately after he spent several thousand on her. Smiling evilly, Michael concluded that he was no longer the same as before and would not fall for all these tricks. The girl, observing the changes in the facial expressions of the young man, mentally noted that he did not look joyful. Finally, Michael, portraying the most indifferent expression on his face, asked why he needed this picture. This reaction of the young man greatly confused the girl, who simply did not know how to respond to this. And Michael suddenly shortened the distance and asked how the girl intended to pay for all the gifts he had given. And at the same moment, with a deft movement, he snatched the piece of paper with the portrait from Angelica's hands. With his other hand, he stopped the movement of the girl's hand, which tried to take away the sheet of paper. Indecently shortening the distance again, he said that he liked the girl herself more than her gift, which made her cheeks turn pink. Angelica felt how she literally dissolved in the most pleasant feelings when this young man was nearby, when he touched her. And at that moment, the voiceover announced to Michael that plus five points had been added to the girl's disposition. Pleased with himself, Michael was preparing to continue his onslaught, which was already bringing the girl into ecstasy. But suddenly their almost complete embrace was broken by a guy who rushed between them. He, turning to Angelica, reproached her for refusing to go for a walk with him under the pretext of going for a manicure with a friend while she was hugging some stranger. Unable to restrain himself, this young man expressed one claim after another. Pointing at Michael, he stated that she only lets this guy hug her because he has money. And Michael was very familiar with this behavior of the young man. And he immediately realized that this young man was a fan of Angelica. Meanwhile, the girl, enraged by the guy's behavior, began to shout angrily that he was no one to her at all, and he shouldn't care about who she hugs or what she does. But the escalation of the conflict was interrupted by the intervention of Michael, who introduced himself to the guy, asked his name, and inquired about how long he had been trying to court Angelica. The young man replied that his name was Tommy, he was also studying at the Faculty of Arts, and had been trying to attract the girl's attention for more than six months. This immediately reminded Michael of himself, where he had been chasing the same girl for three whole years. 
He told this story to his new acquaintance, telling how he had to work four jobs and eat whatever he could in order to satisfy the selfish needs of his passion. And finishing his sad story, he added that in the end this girl still chose to get into someone else's Mercedes. Tommy was clearly shocked by such a story, which left him without any hope of the attention of a girl like Angelica. And Michael reinforced what was said with good friendly advice, saying that those who do this to them only motivate them to become better. After which he urged him to return to the hostel and forget about Angelique, who herself would come running to him sooner or later, having seen his successes in life. The girl did not understand at all what was happening now, watching the action in surprise. She approached Michael saying that Tommy was just an acquaintance of hers, and she had never even considered him as a romantic partner. To which the young man replied that he did not care at all about what the girl might have had with this guy in the past. And then Michael, saying that the girl did not respect either herself or him, began to tear the portrait right in front of her face, causing great amazement in the girl. Having torn a sheet of paper into small pieces and throwing them into the air, Michael turned around and walked away from the girl, saying that until she understood her surroundings and learned to communicate, it was better for them not to meet. He thought to himself that he was very interested in how the girl would react to such an attitude on his part and what she would do. And the girl's thoughts were filled with memories of how Michael treated her at their first meeting. After all, no one had ever been so kind and condescending to her. With tears in her eyes, the girl concluded that Michael really liked her, and now she ruined everything. And it was announced to the departing Michael that plus five points had been added to Angelica's disposition. Studying statistics along the way, the young man concluded that the worse you treat a girl, the more she begins to like her. He decided that he was done with Angelica for now and needed to start winning over Jessica. And suddenly he discovered that Jessica also broadcasts online, specializing in music and dance. Michael found this activity very cute and suggested that this girl could only pretend to be cold and unapproachable, but in fact she was quite sweet and open. But before he could appear online, Marinda immediately began writing him messages that she was very glad to see him, but was in no hurry to agree to the offer to meet. From which Michael, of course, concluded that the girl was simply trying to scam him out of money, promising to dance for him online today. Suddenly, he received a notification that the user he was following would now take part in a competition with another user. Michael became very interested in who the inaccessible first beauty of the university Jessica would compete with. The rival turned out to be Marinda, who concluded that she accidentally called a new girl, which means victory is in her pocket. The young man found this particular set of circumstances quite interesting. Where the experienced and also not deprived of beauty, Marinda competes with the novice blogger and the first beauty Jessica. Marinda, absolutely confident in her victory, stated that her rival should not even try to compete with her, since behind her was the support of such an influential person as a lone wolf. From her experience of catching rich people, Marinda came to the conclusion that she should no longer have the wolf on her hook. And then the program issued a notification that the lone wolf user had made a transfer. But imagine her rage when she saw that the translation was not addressed to her at all. Five million dollars were sent and transferred to the account of Marinda's opponent, Jessica, which shocked Jessica herself. Annoyed by this turn of events, Marinda bit her lips, wondering why the wolf chose the new girl. The director did not hesitate to appear, demanding that the boss give an explanation as to why the money was going to others. Collecting her thoughts, Marinda said goodbye to the audience, saying that she had urgent matters and needed to run. And Michael, looking at the icon informing about the user's vacation, voiced to himself that Marinda shouldn't have played with him because he can support anyone. He then switched to Jessica's channel. Mentally, he told her that he had spent a lot of money on her and the girl should not disappoint him. Meanwhile, in the office of an already well-known company that provides a platform for online broadcasts, its manager was again reported about a huge translation, where the project manager said that this unknown lone wolf showed up again and broke the previous record five times. Having learned this information, the boss flew into a wild rage, declaring that this guy was probably some kind of oil tycoon, and the rest of the envious women who conduct their online broadcasts noted Michael's translation, concluding that today the lone wolf is in a musical mood. And then, clearly not having any depth of thought, 
they all began to call their assistants one by one to carry their musical instruments. And the time was already approaching late evening, where the sun had already disappeared behind the horizon, and the darkness of the night gradually began to descend on the city. Jessica sat at her musical instrument, shocked by the events that had happened, and Kate couldn't get enough of the fact that it was all online and now they could become popular. But the heroine of today was not very happy with the prospect of becoming popular and making various men happy with her appearance. She said that the most important thing for a woman is a career and independence, both financially and in all other aspects of life. Frustrated by her friend's attitude to the issue of popularity, Kate told her not to teach her about life. And immediately after these words, she secretly asked if Jessica knew the rich man who sent the money today. To which the girl angrily replied that she did not know him and should not know him. But immediately after that, with obvious interest in the person of this rich man, she said that he really sent a lot of money, for which she needed to write him a few words of gratitude. And Kate, while collecting equipment, thought with disappointment that her friend had said one thing, but was doing exactly the opposite. Suddenly a wild scream from her friend made the girl literally jump on the spot and drop all the equipment. Unable to swear, she turned around and saw that nothing critical had happened, and could only quietly ask the question of what had happened. To which Jessica responded in confusion that she apparently knew who the lone wolf really was, where she came to the conclusion that it was Michael. Immediately the girl remembered the story of one boy who was the son of a very rich and successful man, but at the same time he was modest and did not want to show his wealth and high position. He received the best education, but realized that he did not want to be the object of everyone's attention and wanted to live freely. One day he met a beautiful girl, fell in love with her and decided to win her favor, but as an ordinary poor person. But the girl's friend listened to this story without enthusiasm and only said that she had reread romance novels. The girl began to worry very much about this poor boy, who since childhood was surrounded by the best, and now it is probably very difficult for him to pretend to be a simple person. Michael, meanwhile, managed to take a shower in his dorm. Having almost finished drying himself, the young man noticed that a message had arrived on his phone. Taking the phone, Michael, not without surprise, noted that Jessica invited him to have dinner together without even asking where he got so much money from, and decided to check on her. The second half of the next, as usual, sunny day was already in full swing. Michael was on his way to a date with Jessica, where he chose a moped as his means of transport. He stopped near the women's hostel, where a certain man had already parked his luxury car. This man was the first to start the conversation, saying that he was waiting for his girlfriend and asking Michael who he was waiting for. At that moment, the young man saw Jessica appear on the street, looking around, apparently in search of Michael. And then the young man, pointing at her, answered the man that this was the same girl he was waiting for here. This statement greatly amused the man, where he said that with such a beauty, he himself had a better chance than a guy who did not even have the means to buy a good car. Meanwhile, Jessica saw a young man waiting for her. She continued to believe in her fantasy, where Michael seemed to her to be a secret rich man who was hiding from everyone. Intoxicated by her fantasies, the girl quickly headed towards him. Meanwhile, the man was busy telling Michael about how he had to work hard and then, maybe in 15, 20 years, such a girl would get into his car. While this narrative of success continued, Jessica had already managed to approach Michael and took a place on the moped behind him. The man didn't even have time to understand anything when a moped rushed past him, on which a guy and a gorgeous girl rushed towards new impressions from each other. The man silently looked after the vehicle speeding off into the distance, and then emotions took over, where he, falling to his knees, lamented the fact that his whole life, aimed at obtaining large incomes, turned out to be meaningless, which this situation with a beauty who sat on some kind of moped had just shown him. Jessica didn't see herself on a simple moped. She saw an expensive bike and a prince in a white suit at its wheel. Her fantasies were dispelled by Michael's voice that they had arrived and the sight of the establishment where he had brought them. It was one of the cheapest fast food places in the city, which people of Jessica's level didn't really notice. And the main dish in this establishment was spicy crayfish and shrimp. Before sitting down at the table, Michael placed a napkin in front of the girl. 
which again evoked in her the most positive emotions based on her fantasies, where she thought that even in the guise of a simple guy, he did not forget the manners instilled in him from childhood. She also gratefully accepted from him a package of disposable gloves, in which it is customary to eat crayfish and shrimp so as not to get your hands dirty. And so a minute later Michael was happily eating the shrimp, and the girl, continuing to live in her fantasies, noted that these are probably the smallest shrimps that he is forced to eat for her sake, so that she does not feel awkward in an expensive restaurant. And at that moment, when Jessica once again imagined the prince in the person of Michael, the latter was told that plus ten points had been added to the girl's disposition. Michael was quite surprised that the location rating had suddenly been added, and Jessica had already taken one shrimp and began to peel it, after which the girl held out the peeled shrimp to Michael's mouth and asked him to open his mouth. Giving him her almost loving look, the girl asked the young man to let her feed him. Michael was completely bewildered by what was happening, but he did not resist and accepted kindness and tenderness from the girl just at the moment when Veronica entered the cafe, accompanied by Mason. Before she could take a step, Veronica noticed Michael and Jessica sitting at the table. She couldn't believe that she had witnessed the unapproachable Jessica feeding Michael from her hands. At the same time, the girl began to think about what was happening with Michael, who just yesterday was leaving accompanied by Angelica, and today he is already in the company of another girl. Not wanting to be in front of her ex, she asked Mason to choose another cafe, saying that there were too many people there. But her companion did not heed the girl's requests, making the correct assumption that she simply did not want to meet her friends. Having said that he would figure everything out now, Mason, literally placing his hand on Veronica, walked with her to the table where Michael was. Michael, who had just taken the shrimp from Jessica's hand, noticed a shadow looming over him from behind. Then he heard his name and saw bills falling in front of his face, after which Mason said that Michael should take these $500 and get out of this cafe. The young man looked at the bills that had fallen both on the table and into the plates of food, and the only thing that came to his mind was that Mason's behavior was extremely ridiculous and did not do him any credit. Throwing another stack of not very large bills, Mason said that now it should definitely be enough for Michael to get away from here and Jessica suddenly squeezed her purse so hard that her finger bones even cracked. This did not go unnoticed by Michael, who could not understand why the girl was so angry. And the reason for Jessica's anger was Mason, who was now ruining her perfect date, and to whom she sent all imaginable and inconceivable curses. But Mason did not let up, saying that if it was not enough, he could add more, accompanying the words with the movement of his fingers, taking out another stack of banknotes from his wallet and throwing them into the air. Suddenly, someone's hand suddenly fell on the bills lying on the table. The waiter arrived in time and offered Mason to give all this money to him in exchange for organizing another table for him. Roughly grabbing the waiter by the clothes, the man began to say that he did not want any other table other than this one. But his speech was interrupted by a sweeping blow from a woman's handbag right in the face, which did not go in vain on a couple of his teeth. At Michael's surprised look, Jessica hastened to say that this was not her doing. And behind them, a huge silhouette appeared, which called Mason a scumbag, living on her money, driving his car, and, as it turns out, also sleeping with other girls using her money. Michael was literally shaken by the sight of this scary huge woman behind him. And Mason, holding the bruised place, asked his wife Goldie what she was doing here. To which the terrible woman terribly distorting her face and accompanying her speech with choice abuse, replied that if she had not been here, she would never have known that he was sleeping with others. And Mason suddenly began to say that Goldie was all he had, that she was the only one, that he owed her everything and didn't even think about other girls, which, having already understood the essence of what was happening, Veronica looked at with reproach. Suddenly, Mason suddenly grabbed Veronica by the hair and began accusing her that it was her fault, that she was the one who tried to seduce him. To which the girl tried to justify herself by saying that the man himself began to court her and said that he did not have a partner. With a furious demand to shut up, Mason gave the girl a strong slap in the face. Not at all expecting such a turn of events, Veronica fell to the floor and looked in fear at the angry man. But Mason did not let up, Having entered into the role of the victim on whom the feminine charms had been tested, he had already raised his hand for a new blow. 
However, someone's hand stopped his movement. It was Michael who said that a man only disgraces himself by beating a woman in front of the entire cafe. So continuing to sit on the floor and clutching her cheek that was burning from the blow, Veronica suddenly realized that Michael still loved her. Meanwhile, Michael was told that Veronica's favor had increased by 60 points and that her favor had reached the maximum possible level. After which the voiceover said that Veronica is a fan of the master. The amount of Michael's personal financial benefit from spending on the girl is $5,000, and 20 gain points were also awarded. Without hesitation, the young man gave the order to use 10 points to improve his physical characteristics. And at the same moment, with a deft movement of his hand, he performed a trick on Mason by bending his arm behind his back, which made the latter howl, after which he pushed him away from himself. But the restless man was not going to admit defeat, grabbing the bottle that stood on one of the tables. Screaming and swearing, he swung it over the young man's head. But for Michael, who had improved his physical characteristics, Mason moved too slowly. With one short lunge forward, the young man literally swept the enemy out of his way. Michael said to Mason, kneeling in front of him, that there is no shame in being supported by a woman, but there is a shame in raising a hand against a woman. But these words flew past the ears of the disgraced man, who did not want to put up with the loss and began to take a knife out of his pocket. Seeing the bladed weapon, Jessica shouted to her companion to be careful, and the enraged man had already managed to straighten up and begin to perform a stabbing movement with his hand forward, tightly squeezing his weapon. But it was not difficult for the pumped-up young man to leave the line of attack, simultaneously grabbing the enemy's hand and knocking the knife out of it. Where immediately after this, without giving the enemy a second to somehow come to his senses and react, Michael used a technique that wrestlers call a throw over the back. The sound of the splat on the floor seemed to be audible even on the street, and so Mason lay unconscious on the floor, defeated by the brave young man who defended the girl's honor. The winner himself, modestly placing his hands in his trouser pockets, headed towards the exit where Jessica followed him. But suddenly his movement was interrupted by Veronica, who, grabbing his leg, said that she was wrong towards him and asked him to give her another chance. For a moment, Michael thought about it, but quickly pulled himself together and began to speak. He reminded the girl of how he dragged her several kilometers to the hospital when she got hurt. He remembered how he worked tirelessly for six months to give her a new phone, which she refused because it was not the latest model. He also remembered that he had always known about her frivolity and commercialism, but stubbornly believed that sooner or later she would notice him and appreciate his efforts. Concluding his speech, Michael said that Veronica had a lot of time and chances. Now the Michael who ran for her has died, and the girl has made her choice. Tears of grief and despair welled up in Veronica's eyes, because every word of the young man was the truth, which, as we know, always hits hard, where the pain from its blows is always stronger than physical pain. Once on the street, Michael apologized to his companion for everything that happened, which ruined their date, to which Jessica playfully replied that everything was great, and she had a unique chance to see the young man from the other side. Such words from the girl greatly embarrassed Michael, but at the same time they were pleasant to him. And Jessica, unable to take her eyes off the young man and replaying the events of today's date in her head, was firmly convinced that this guy could still surprise her with many things. Soon the sky over the city was covered with black thunderclouds, and the downpour did not take long to arrive. The door to the dorm room swung open very suddenly, as if it had been kicked with all its might. So Veronica returned to the room after an unsuccessful evening, where the neighbor who met her lamented the fact that the girl did not have an umbrella with her, and she was all wet. The greeter hastened to tell the news that yesterday Jessica received as much as five million from Michael, which infuriated the already very upset girl who asked where such information came from, to which the friend explained that Jessica's neighbor had spilled the beans about it. Digesting the new information, Veronica fell into some sort of stupor for a few seconds, and finally she reached her psychological limit and burst into tears. Her sobs were accompanied by such loud sounds that in the neighboring rooms of the dorm, unfriendly statements were constantly heard addressed to the one who was interfering with her rest. Meanwhile, in the room where Michael lived, his neighbors were surprised that their friend was very good at playing video games, suggesting that he was a secret esports player. 
And Michael himself thought that after the distribution of reinforcement points, even playing games became very easy, but he said out loud that he was just lucky. While his friends were offering him business ideas, like the one to broadcast their games online, Michael got ready to go to the shower. In the shower, he saw the direct effect of the enhancement glasses, expressed in the clearly visible relief of the muscles on his body. He also noticed that his facial features had changed, becoming more fit and courageous. Looking at his body in the mirror, the young man could only think about the fact that now he had to avoid taking shortcuts with the girls. He was distracted from admiring himself by the call of his neighbors, who shouted that his phone was ringing. Michael, coming out of the shower, took the phone. It turned out that the first beauty of the Faculty of Arts, the beautiful Angelica, was calling him. In his thoughts, the young man came to the conclusion that this cunning girl had come up with something new to lure money from him and win him over, which means he needs to be on his guard. Picking up the phone, Michael asked the girl the purpose of her call. But loud sobs and screams that were heard in the speaker of the phone literally forced the young man to pull the receiver away from his ear. The apartment where Angelica lived was in another part of the city. There were new things scattered all over the room, the labels from which had not even been torn off yet. The girl herself was sitting in the middle of the room on her knees on the floor, bowing her head. Unable to stop her tears, Angelique asked Michael to lend her half a million dollars, she began to say that her father had always been addicted to gambling. And then one day he lost big bandits came to them and took everything they had, after which their previously well-off family found themselves at the very bottom. In the end, the girl added that she was not selfish at all. It's just that their family has a lot of debts that need to be repaid. Having listened to the end, Michael simply hung up without saying anything in response, which surprised the girl. But a moment later, a message arrived on the girl's phone, after reading which Angelica was simply shocked because five million had been deposited into her account. And Michael sent her a voice message that he just accidentally made a mistake by one zero. Clutching the phone with the treasured message to her chest, Angelica swore to herself that she must definitely thank Michael. The rain outside was getting heavier. Michael sat in his room, annoyed that despite everything, Angelica's position did not reach the foot level and amounted to 94 points. It was necessary to come up with something, to act in a different way and perhaps directly. He remembered the treatise The Art of War by Sun Tzu, where one of the rules was that the enemy must be forced to act when he hesitates. By morning the rain had stopped, the clouds had cleared and a nice, warm, sunny day was shaping up. Michael walked from the hostel to the academic buildings, accompanied by one of his neighbors. Suddenly he heard a woman's voice calling out to him. It was Veronica, who, handing him a package, said that she had prepared lunch for him and offered to go to lectures together. But before Michael had time to say a word in response, another female voice attracted his attention from the other side. It was Angelica, who, holding out a special thermos for food, said that she had also prepared a delicious lunch for him, because she thought that he was probably already tired of eating in the student canteen. And then the eyes of the two girls met, not foreshadowing anything good for each other. And Michael stood between them, dumbfounded and did not know what to do or what to say. At this very moment, when the situation seemed to be heating up to the limit, Michael heard another call behind him. The young man slowly turned around and his amazement knew no bounds. Behind him stood Jessica, who said that she also brought him lunch, where she chose beef noodles as the lunch dish. At the same moment, not the most friendly glances of other contenders for Michael's attention were directed towards the girl. Where do outside spectators all this seemed like a kind of fight inside the ring? And Michael, taking the bag of food from the girl's hands, asked in surprise how Jessica knew that he liked beef noodles. To which the girl timidly replied that yesterday, when they were eating shrimp, she assumed that the young man liked spicy dishes, where everyone knows that one of the best spicy dishes is noodles with beef. Michael thought to himself that this girl had a clear advantage because of her attentiveness, and he thanked her out loud, saying that it was always nice when someone showed concern. And the prudent Jessica said that gratitude is not required, you just need to always take into account the preferences of the person for whom you are cooking. And the enraged Veronica and Angelica continued to devour the seemingly modest Jessica with their eyes. But no matter how hard they tried to make it look worse, the opponent had already dealt her signature blow, from which all her rivals scattered in different directions without any chance of success. 
Suddenly, Jessica pulled out a small box and handed it to Michael with words of gratitude. Michael was simply shocked because it was a smartphone of the newest model. The students standing nearby all this time, who witnessed this whole scene with the participation of Michael and the three most beautiful girls of the university, were again shocked that the unapproachable Jessica was giving gifts to this guy. Her rivals experienced no less shock, also wondering about the level of wealth of the girl who could afford to give such an expensive gift. It was a control blow from Jessica, which literally smashed her opponents across the floor. And the girls had no choice but to watch the departing couple. The day was just beginning, where the sun was still gaining its height. Veronica was the first to break the silence after Michael left, telling herself that she just wanted him back, but didn't understand why it had become so difficult. Angelica was able to control herself much better, and she turned to a recent rival who found herself in the same situation with a question about her name and whether they could discuss something with her. To which the girl responded with a sudden outburst of anger, shouting that they had nothing to talk about, and that in general this whole situation had developed because of Angelica. But the enterprising girl, stopping this outburst of rage, said in a soft voice that they should act together. Because this is the only way they can effectively resist Jessica, who is taking Michael away from them. Meanwhile, Michael stood not far from Jessica and admired both the gift itself and the personal qualities of the girl who made it. But then he carefully looked first at the girl and then at her level in the system. And at that same moment, the realization came to him that such a low level of disposition in no way fits with her actual actions, where, without information about her disposition, the young man could come to the conclusion that the girl fell in love with him. This means that now all this is delicious food, an expensive phone, nothing more than bait for him. Michael came to the conclusion that this girl is really smart, and her methods are very sophisticated, where the predator allows the prey to think that she is the hunter. After thinking about this, the young man concluded that he needed to find some way to speed up the process of increasing Jessica's favor. Michael was distracted from his thoughts by messages from Marinda, who apologized that last time she was unable to arrange a meeting with him. But this does not mean that she does not want to meet, which greatly amused the young man, who understood all her selfish motives. But then, immediately after Marinda's message, Michael received another one, which contained a link and password to enter the coolest chat room in the city, where the most famous and wealthy people communicated. Having logged into this chat, the first message the young man received was a question about the opportunity to discuss a business proposal. But Michael immediately realized that all these rich people just wanted to test him and decided to play this game with them. He wrote that he was ready to discuss any proposals from his new comrades, to which he immediately received a photograph indicating the location of a rich villa and with an offer to purchase this luxury property. The offer was unexpected and real estate in that area was indeed worth tens of millions, but Michael wrote that he could ask the price for this house the other day, after which he returned to Jessica's company. Meanwhile, in that very country villa, the following events took place. Quite unexpectedly, having received consent to look at the property, a certain man told his companion that, apparently, this lone wolf was not a deceiver, and he really had money. To which his interlocutor said that this would become clear in the next two days. But there is no need to worry in any case because no matter how you look at it, their team will win and will either get a new wealthy partner or expose the fraudster. A few minutes later, a message was received on the young man's phone with the address where the pitchfork was located. And then the question arose in his head how much Jessica's position could improve if he gave her such a villa. The next day, Michael and Veronica got out of the taxi and stood in front of the house at the very address that the young man received in a closed chat for a select few. The owner of the house, accompanied by a girl, stood next to the house and looked out for a wealthy buyer. With a wave of his hand, he greeted the young people who got out of the taxi and apologized for not sending a car for them. To which Michael replied that everything was fine and the man had nothing to worry about. And the owner of the house appreciated the simple appearance of the guy and the sophistication of the girl, trying to understand where this simple-looking young man got so much money. But without getting anywhere, the man said that he himself is a businessman, but is currently experiencing some financial difficulties, and therefore decided to sell this luxurious house. After which he invited the young people to go inside, 
accompanying his invitation with a hand gesture. Then a standard tour of the house began, during which the owner talked about the area and other positive aspects of the house. Where the owner took guests and potentially buyers through all the significant parts of his house, not forgetting about the pool. And in the final part, he drew the attention of Michael and Jessica to the gorgeous view from the window and said that if not for financial problems, he would have ordered that he be buried here too. And then it dawned on the girl that her companion apparently wants to buy this luxurious house, which must cost a lot. Meanwhile, Michael, in his simple-minded manner, said that the house was not bad and asked the owner to simply name the amount he wanted to get for it and not bother with the presentation anymore. The owner of the house would have been happy with an amount of $50 million, but he decided to raise the price a little, leaving room for bargaining, and of course not forgetting to mention that some potential buyers had already expressed serious intentions to purchase the house. Therefore, the price that Michael heard was $60 million. Making the most disinterested expression on his face, the young man said that only $60 million was not a problem for him, and he agreed to buy a house. After these words, the shocked owner of the house mentally reproached himself for not mentioning the amount of $80 million, and his companion could not believe that in this world, there are people for whom $60 million is not money. Meanwhile, Michael turned to Jessica, asking her questions about what she thought about this house and whether it was worth purchasing it. The girl, who did not expect such a question, asked a counter-question about why suddenly the young man was interested in her opinion, to which the young man replied in a sweet tone that the reason for such interest was that he was buying the house for her. The seller could now only be amazed at how this unknown rich man buys gifts for $60 million. On the one hand, the girl was infinitely happy to hear this, but on the other, she thought that she was getting some kind of too expensive gift. She immediately imagined that after such a gift, the young man could literally decide that he had become the full owner of her body and maybe her soul. Very carefully, Jessica began to tell Michael that she was very grateful to him for such a gorgeous gift, but precisely because of its high cost, she could not accept it. However, the young man approached her, taking her hand, and began to say that too much real estate was already registered in his name and the state had recently been introducing new restrictions, so he thought that there would be nothing wrong if one villa was registered on the girl. And in conclusion, Michael added that he still hopes to give the girl this house in the future. Jessica looked at the young man with her fascinated gaze. Her face was burning with a surge of emotions. It was possible to register the house only in the name of the spouse, and thoughts immediately flashed through the girl's head that Michael already saw their future together in marriage. Jessica's happiness knew no bounds and she completely lost her head, and Michael did not stop his onslaught, saying that he did not see any point in dividing something as belonging to him or her, taking into account the level of their relationship. The girl was smitten by these heartwarming words, and Michael received message after message that points were being added to Jessica's favor. The young man noted for himself that his acting abilities are getting better every day, and at the same time, the girl accompanying the owner of the house, who apparently was connected with him by something more, timidly asked when the man would give her some similar significant expensive gift, at least in the form of an apartment. But the man, realizing that he was not financially capable of such gifts, only laughed absurdly in response. And now the time has come, which is cherished for the owner of the house, to transfer the advance payment. After transferring this, Michael, already saying goodbye, said that he would transfer the remaining $50 million after signing the purchase and sale agreement, with which the owner of the house, of course, agreed, saying that he would prepare all the necessary documents. And so the young people left this luxurious villa and its owners, again calling a taxi. The car with Michael and Jessica inside was moving towards the campus, and the young man sat and calculated in his mind that as soon as Jessica's favor reached the required level, the $60 million spent on the house would turn into his personal $6 million, according to the rules of the system. But the girl had completely different thoughts, which she based on her experience of reading novels, where she believed that the next step on the part of the young man accompanying her now should be to declare his love to her, where it will be close to the wedding, which would be nice to hold somewhere in the Alps. And then they will have a long and happy family life together, children and a common old age, 
until which they will carefully preserve their feelings for each other. All these dreams and fantasies greatly turned the head of the girl, drunk with feelings. Michael's words that they had arrived at their destination abruptly brought Jessica out of her pleasant fantasies. Where she looked out the car window and saw the buildings of the university. Getting out of the car, the girl asked in surprise why Michael didn't come out, to which she immediately received the answer that he had been invited to the gaming club, where he was now heading. After which the car suddenly took off, leaving the girl completely alone. This is not how she saw the continuation of today and stood disappointed that she never received a declaration of love. Soon a taxi brought Michael to one of the gaming clubs in the city. The comrades who met him said that they had been sitting here for a long time and had managed to lose several times while Michael was not with them. Having said that there was nothing wrong with losing, Michael said that there was no need to worry since he was now compensating for his absence. Approaching the checkout, the young man made a large order for all his friends and acquaintances in this gaming club, asking everyone to extend the playing time, bring soda and cigarettes. But the girl standing behind the cash register suddenly called him by name, where, turning his head, Michael saw Angelica, whom he immediately asked what she was doing here. To which the girl explained that after the young man helped pay off the debts, her father founded a network of gaming clubs, where this club is one of them. After which the joyful girl first said that everything that Michael ordered today would be free for him, but then she changed her mind, saying that it would always be free for him. But before Michael had time to say a word in response, a terrible roar was heard behind him, from which his heart almost jumped out of his chest. Where the source of this noise was not slow to appear in the form of a big guy with a bat on his shoulder, with which he had just broken one of the computers, declaring that he needed his money. Angelica replied that she and her father had already paid back everything they owed, to which the big man said that they had forgotten about the accrued interest. But the girl was not going to give up and stubbornly defended her position, declaring that this was simply some kind of extortion. But the stubborn man suddenly grabbed the girl by the hand, saying that if there is no money, then she will go with him and will work off this money for two years in his strip club. The big man didn't even have time to understand how he suddenly lost control of the girl's hand and found himself in an uncomfortable position with his hand behind his back, where Michael, who was holding his hand, accompanied his actions with words telling the man to get out of here. The girl looked at her savior with fascination and joy, saying words of gratitude. At that moment, the entire retinue accompanying him rushed to the aid of his boss which didn't frighten the young man at all, who had pumping from the system on his side. He only managed to throw punches and kicks in different directions, scattering opponents left and right. This could not go unnoticed by all visitors to the gaming club, including Michael's comrades. Where Michael was the last to immediately introduce himself as a certain hero of a computer fighting game with a perfectly executed striking technique. It was as if they were watching in real-life footage of some movie where the main character famously deals with the villains and could not understand when their comrade managed to improve his skills in martial arts so much. And so a minute later this entire indecent company hastily retreated from the battlefield, taking with them a bunch of bruises, bumps, and broken noses. And Angelica immediately rushed into Michael's arms with words of gratitude to her savior, at the same time, it was announced to the young man that the girl's disposition had reached the required level, which means the owner receives $530,000 out of $5,300,000 spent on her, and so same five gain points. Just at that moment, when Michael could not get enough of the award he received, and Angelica was hanging on his neck, Veronica passed by. She attracted the girl's attention by calling her a lying creature. Enraged, Veronica began accusing Angelica of violating the agreement to confront Jessica together and attempting to single-handedly seduce Michael. Seeing that the situation was heating up, Michael instructed the system to spend all the gain points on the speed of his movement and literally disappeared from the scene. After some time, the young man was moving around the sports field, thinking that he had already fulfilled the conditions of the system with two girls, which means he urgently needs to find a new girl. Otherwise, he risks being left without income and gain. A light touch on the shoulder attracted the young man's attention, forcing him to leave his thoughts. A charming girl stood in front of him and said that an athletics competition would be held here now, and the young man needed to leave the treadmill. 
All Michael did was point out how attractive this girl was. Immediately showing his intelligence, the young man said that he would fulfill the girl's request in exchange for her phone number. At this moment, a dissatisfied male voice was heard from the side, which attracted the girl's attention. Where literally a second later, the sweet girl was covered by a certain young man who called himself her boyfriend and rudely suggested that Michael get away. Michael, looking carefully at this guy, thought in his head that his face looked very familiar. And then Michael remembered how this guy beat him because of a girl back in his school years. He beat him when Michael refused to do his homework for him. He just hit it when there was nothing to do. Only one thought flashed through the young man's head, and it was the thought that the world is small and the boomerang law works. And while the girl was leaving with her boyfriend, the system announced to Michael that a new object named Christy had been added with a favorability level of minus five, and upon reaching the desired favorability level, the owner would receive, as always, 10% of the investment and 22 gain points. Which couldn't help but please Michael, since 22 gain points already sounded quite serious. Meanwhile, the start of the competition was approaching, where the athletes were already taking their starting positions. And Christy from the stands shouted words of support to her boyfriend Billy, who sent her various signs of greeting. And the guy sitting next to him with glasses managed to notice that an extra runner had appeared at the edge of the treadmills. The commands to start and attention had already sounded, where the runners took the corresponding pre-start positions. And then a shot sounded from the signal pistol replacing the start command. The race began with Billy jumping ahead, reveling in his complacency and calling those behind him worthless insects. Before he even had time to understand what had happened, Michael rushed right past him at great speed. In just a split second, he left Billy and all the other athletes behind him. Michael ran, mentally communicating with Billy, where he told him that now he would lose in an area where it would seem he had no equal. Well, Billy... Meanwhile, as if hearing Michael's thoughts, also mentally said that there was no need to underestimate him. Having stopped, he took off his shoes, which, in his opinion, should have significantly improved his speed, and said that now he would quickly catch up. Glancing around, Billy was just beginning to pick up speed again to run. Suddenly, having managed to make a full circle by this time, Michael rushed past him again, throwing words along the way that it would be better for him to start working with his feet and not with his tongue. Looking after Michael, who was speeding away for another circle, Billy could not believe that he had already managed to make a full circle in such a short time. Michael, again mentally communicating with his opponent, said that Billy had devoted his whole life to hard training, but he could not compare with the capabilities of his system. Meanwhile, a sports event commentator, drawing attention to Michael's speed, began to shout loudly that he had never seen anything like this before, and that even their current champion was unable to withstand such speed. And now, less than a minute after the start of the race, Michael crossed the finish line, becoming its winner. Christie's surprise knew no bounds. She couldn't believe that her boyfriend had lost. Well, Michael was already grabbed by a crowd of fans and thrown into the air as the commentator said that they had all just witnessed the birth of a new champion. When the crowd of fans finally left Michael alone, an athletics coach approached him, who, first noting the young man's extraordinary abilities, invited him to join the national team. Hearing this, Billy almost shouted with tears in his eyes that this place in the national team was reserved for him. Michael, when leaving, fired a control shot, declaring that he was not interested in such an offer at all. The victory, appearance, and behavior of Michael did not leave Christy indifferent, where she noted the strength of spirit and masculinity of the young man. Billy's question about the essence of the girl's thoughts, voiced with a very dissatisfied intonation, brought Christy back to reality. To which she quickly collected herself and replied that she was simply worried about Billy's failure in the competition. And satisfied with revenge, Michael listened with pleasure to the system's messages about Christie's improvement. In parallel with these events, Jessica returned to her room satisfied with the development of events, who, from the threshold and without even letting her neighbor say a word, declared that Michael had given her a house. And while Kate's emotions were raging, Jessica talked about how they went to see this house together. Then the girl began reasoning out loud about how she and Michael needed to plan for the future, as well as threats against the owner of the villa so that he would not change his mind about selling. And Kate, after listening to all this for a while, decided to go online and was shocked by what she saw and read there. 
On one of the pages of the news section of the university website, a photograph of Michael was posted with the caption that he was the main womanizer of the university. Kate was quick to show this to Jessica, where both girls couldn't understand what it all meant. Michael's roommate also discovered this news and showed it to the young man, where the latter immediately stated that this was complete slander since he was just spending money on girls. To himself, he seriously thought about the fact that someone clearly didn't like the fact that he was so popular. Meanwhile, several guys who were publishing news, sitting in front of the monitor, were happy that their post had already received many views and Michael's reputation would soon come to an end. They were frightened by Billy's voice creeping up behind them, who asked what they were doing here. To which they replied that a certain Michael had been behaving very defiantly lately, and they decided to teach him a lesson. Looking at the photo on the internet, Billy immediately recognized the same guy who so brazenly got into the tournament and took the victory from him. But now, having looked at him more closely, he remembered the one he constantly beat and harassed in high school. And then he said that he had known this guy since school, and the definition of a womanizer definitely didn't suit him. He was rather a suck-up, brazenly pestering girls and clinging to everyone who showed him a sign of attention. And since there was intriguing material here, the young correspondents quickly made Billy sit comfortably and asked him to tell everything in detail, and more slowly, so that he could write everything down. Billy reveled in the thought of revenge, where not a trace should remain of the reputation of Michael, who so brazenly deprived him of the respect of his coach and first place in competitions. Soon the entire university was reading and was shocked by the news, where Michael was accused of molesting girls, of violence against them, and in general of almost half of the crimes provided for by criminal law. Shouting that this state of affairs was unacceptable, the rector of the university slammed his phone onto the table with all his might. He abruptly stood up from the table and loudly declared that this should not happen at his university, and he would personally conduct the most thorough investigation, where he would kick out that guy if everything was confirmed, and his personal assistant looked with tears at the broken phone that he I personally searched for the boss for a whole week. Michael is a unique person, coming from a wealthy family, and cannot ignore the girl's misfortunes. He is a fair and selfless person who will never ignore someone else's misfortune and will always protect. Every girl in this city can rely on him and count on his help and support. Every night he turns into a superhero, punishes evil, and saves this city full of sin. This is exactly how Jessica described Michael, sitting in a chair in front of the investigation team. Those who could not believe what they heard said that the girl was clearly exaggerating and asked for clarification about the source of such conclusions to which the girl displeasedly stated that these conclusions were based on unquestionable female intuition. The rector standing nearby asked the assistant whether the words of this girl could be trusted, to which the assistant, reading the personal file, replied that the girl was from a good family, was the chairman of the student society, and there was no reason not to trust her. But the incredulous rector gave instructions to ask the opinions of other students, including students in the same faculty as Michael. In connection with this decision, the investigation team members asked Veronica, who was walking on campus, to come with them. And now she, bursting into tears, was already sitting in the office and telling how she and Michael broke up because of her, and now he doesn't pay attention to her, but at the same time, she called him the most reliable and worthy person. Where an employee of the investigation team, having handed over napkins, was very surprised that despite the fact that the young man rejected the girl, he still continues to be a good person for her. The rector watched the girl's words about Michael silently from behind the glass, and then without saying a word he turned around and left the room, leaving his assistant alone and with a feeling of misunderstanding of what was happening. Having lit another cigarette, the rector stood and thought that there was a high probability that Michael had been slandered, and in fact, he was a good guy. He was distracted from these thoughts by the approach of Angelica and her father, from whom he asked how he could help. To which they, unfolding a poster where it was written about Michael's innocence, said that this guy had helped their family a lot, and they came to support him, where Angelica also studies here, only at a different faculty. This state of affairs could not leave the rector indifferent, where absolutely everything spoke in Michael's favor. 
saying that he would certainly sort everything out immediately and thanking Angelica and her father for their participation, the rector said goodbye to them. And then he decided to visit the Internet himself, where he could read independent and objective comments from people uninterested in the outcome of the issue. Where literally from the first page, he came across a positive review about Michael and an expressed desire to get to know him better from some girl. What followed was an independent description of the young man's participation and victory in an athletics competition, where he beat the reigning champion. There was also talk about Michael's very friendly attitude towards all the girls, where under the pictures and views there were dozens of comments from girls that this decent young man was simply slandered and each of them would be happy to be considered his girlfriend. This finally convinced the rector of Michael's innocence, where he saw that the guy was simply the idol of all the girls, which probably provoked his envious people to slander. Instantly, pictures of the past appeared in the man's head. After all, at one time he too was the best of the best, and a unique handsome man in the entire university, attracting the attention of all the girls, which of course regularly attracted a variety of envious people. There was no internet then, and in order to set him up, these envious people damaged university property in his name. For which he was brought to disciplinary liability, his parents paid a fine, and this whole story almost ended with his expulsion. With tears in his eyes, the rector spoke out loud words of understanding to Michael, who was not there. And finally, having collected his thoughts and wiped away his tears, the rector loudly declared that he, the head of this university, would never allow lies and slander to flourish here, and justice would be restored immediately. After just a couple of hours, all university students were gathered in the assembly hall, where Michael stood on stage in complete confusion and listened as the rector made a statement that the information recently circulated about this young man was blatant slander. The rector's impulses reached the point that he hugged the young man and said that today they had all gathered here in order to restore his good name. Then, with the words that Michael is the pride of the university and the most good-natured person, the rector presented him with a certificate of honor. And at that very moment, the whole hall burst into thunderous applause for Michael. And among this applauding crowd stood an embittered Billy, who could not understand what had happened, because he hoped that the false information he had reported, spread on the internet, would completely destroy Michael, who had just for some reason suddenly been awarded a certificate of honor. Not far from him stood Christy, who supported the ovation and noted to herself that Michael was very good. And then Michael saw messages that Christy's favor was beginning to grow with a plus sign. After which he looked at the beautiful girl, who was clearly beginning to experience some feelings towards him. The event was over, and all the students began to disperse in all directions. And the restless Billy approached Christy and began to make claims against her regarding the fact that she applauded Michael so zealously causing such stupid claims to cause an attack of anger in the girl, saying that she has the right to admire good people, and Michael is a good person, since he does a lot for people, but at the same time does not expect anything in return, the girl turned around and walked away from the evil gentleman. As she left, she also reminded the guy that when he beat him in the race, he could have reveled in his victory, but he behaved more than worthy, and even refused the offer to join the national team. Her affectionate tone in which she spoke about Michael completely drove Billy crazy. He grabbed the girl's wrist painfully, yelling at her to shut up and that Michael couldn't get around him. The pain brought tears to Christy's eyes and she screamed for Billy to let her go. But the guy was definitely possessed by some kind of demon, where with a crazy look he began to say that Michael in fact is a nobody, while Billy's father has a huge fortune and offers to buy his son a luxury electric car. And then Michael passed by, who said that he didn't particularly like to show off his wealth at the university and asked not to send an overly expensive car for him. But the already familiar owner of the villa, who decided to come for such a valuable buyer himself, nevertheless drove a very noticeable car, the sight of which literally made Billy's eyes pop out of his head. Michael quickly climbed into the cabin and the car sped away. And Christy, looking at the car taking away the one she liked so much, told Billy that after his outburst, it was better for them to end the relationship. But he didn't seem to even hear the girl, continuing to say that he didn't believe that he had just seen Michael drive away from here in a luxury car. And Michael and the seller of the villa had already arrived at the bank. 
where the young man transferred the remaining 50 million to the man, which evoked the most positive emotions from the former owner of the villa. He offered to give the young man a ride back to the university, which Michael refused, saying that the man's car was too conspicuous and he would rather get there on his own. While he was walking towards the university and thinking about what else could be more expensive to buy for Jessica, his attention was attracted by messages in the chat of the rich, where the seller of the house had already shared the news that the lone wolf had purchased a villa and expressed his most sincere gratitude for this help, to which Michael immediately replied that it was not at all difficult for him, and he was always happy to help. And suddenly it dawned on the young man that he could give the girl some very expensive car. After some time, Michael was already in one of the most expensive and popular car dealerships. He was met personally by the owner of the car dealership, who wholeheartedly greeted the lone wolf. This was the son of the head of a huge corporation, known far beyond the borders of their city, which was mainly engaged in the production and sale of cars and cargo transportation by water on its own ships. Looking at the business card handed to him, Michael thought that for his age, this young man named Mark occupied a very good position in society. Without delaying time, Mark immediately invited Michael to walk through the salon and inspect the cars. And the salon employees accompanying Mark, watching the departing men, speculated who this visitor was, whom the director decided to accompany personally. As we drove, the director boasted that this car dealership was the best, and here Michael could find absolutely any car. Hearing this statement, the young man looked at Mark, after which, in his simple-minded manner, he said what kind of car he would like to buy. This had its effect, where the director began to say something about the limited edition of such cars and their exorbitant price. And after Michael named several more brands of expensive luxury cars, the director had no choice but to say that their showroom sold cars in the price range from two to eight million to which Michael stated that apparently he couldn't find anything useful here and needed to go somewhere else. Mark, thinking that after purchasing a house worth 60 million, Michael was unlikely to manage the purchase of an expensive car, he decided, as they say, to play trump cards. Approaching one copy, he said that he was ready to offer the young man the most expensive car they had in their showroom, after which he tore off the white sheet from the iron horse, revealing his beautiful form to the whimsical buyer. And then Mark was quick to name the cost of this automotive masterpiece, $22 million. Michael thought that in principle, $22 million is neither very expensive nor very cheap, which means it would be quite suitable as a gift for Jessica. He thanked the director for his efforts, said that he would pay by card and asked to drive the car to the campus area. After which he handed the card to Mark, who was stunned by this turn of affairs. While the deal was being finalized, Michael received an incoming call from his best friend, Jack. Before he had time to press the green button on the mobile phone screen, a wild scream was heard from the phone speaker, informing Michael that she had cheated on him. Jack said that just yesterday his girlfriend Linda went to her friends to get a manicure, but when it was late evening, she never returned. He went outside, intending to follow the route the girl was supposed to take, where I witnessed the farewell scene between Linda and some man. Forcefully placing the mug on the table, Jack, with tears in his eyes, finished his story by saying that he already had plans to introduce her to her parents. And then, without hesitation, Jack emptied the mug as Michael told him to stop drinking. And his friend suddenly turned to Michael with the question that maybe it was not too late to return Linda, to persuade her to be with him. But the young man's reaction to these words was quite aggressive, where he, grabbing his friend's clothes said that it was the girl who was to blame for everything, not him. And Jack knelt down, saying that he seemed to understand everything, but he couldn't help himself. But Michael was unperturbed, coldly saying that Jack was delusional about the fact that his ex was, in fact, a good person. After which he took out his mobile phone and started dialing a number. And when a friend asked what he was up to, the young man replied that there was no need to worry, now he would arrange everything and Linda would beg him to be together again. Michael called the manager of the car dealership where he had recently purchased a car, who at first responded without any enthusiasm. But when the young man said that he wanted to buy a few more luxury cars, Mark noticeably cheered up. And Jack silently watched as Michael carried out some manipulations with his phones, called somewhere and negotiated something with someone. The last one was a conversation with a certain girl with whom Michael agreed to meet in the near future. And now, 
Less than an hour later, Angelica was already throwing herself into Michael's arms, saying that she missed her very much, which Jack was quite surprised by. At dinner, the young man introduced Jack and Angelica to each other. The girl asked out loud whether Michael had really made an appointment with her at such a late hour just to introduce her to a friend, but she privately decided that meeting her best friend was a good indicator of the young man's intentions. Which is a clear indication that Michael likes her. And Michael, as always, simply replied that he invited her for a reason, but with the purpose of asking her to help them tomorrow in one matter. The long-awaited tomorrow for Jack came quickly enough for everyone else, including those who were racing along the track in an expensive sports car. And this was Linda with her new young man, with whom Jack found her, and who was now saying that the girl would not be happy with her ex. A bright red sports car appeared suddenly and seemingly out of nowhere. While completing the overtaking, he cut off the car in which the newly made couple was, forcing the driver to pull over to the side of the road. Linda's new boyfriend leaned out of the window, making an obscene gesture and hurling curses at the negligent driver of the red car. But when the car door opened, he was simply speechless, where first a graceful female leg stood on the asphalt, after which a slender body appeared in a red dress, which very well highlighted and emphasized the girl's gorgeous breasts. And now Angelica was completely out of the car, where she amazed Linda's new boyfriend with her beauty, who completely forgot about everything in the world. But the show was just beginning, because the second door of the red car opened, and a man's foot stood on the asphalt. And now, adjusting the bracelet of his gold watch, Jack stood next to Angelica, the appearance of which caught Linda's attention. And then Angelica grabbed Jack's hand, saying that she was very scared that the guy driving could scratch her new car, which Jack had just given her. And Jack, trying to stop the trembling in his hands, replied that then he would buy her new. Linda's new boyfriend couldn't believe what he was seeing now, because everyone, including himself, thought that Jack's family was poor. Meanwhile, Linda began to be overcome by feelings of jealousy, envy, and anger. Finally, unable to bear it, Linda shouted at Jack what kind of performance he was putting on here, to which the latter did not pay attention, telling Angelica to get into the car. But Linda did not let up, saying that she was well aware of the financial situation of his family, and this performance was simply ridiculous. Meanwhile, Mark, who remained in the car, said that this woman had seen through them, to which Michael immediately replied that it did not matter, since the final stage of his plan was beginning, which would fix everything. Before he could finish speaking, a strong roar of engines was heard and elite sports cars began to appear around the bend, one after another which stopped near the place where the performance was taking place, instantly filling the empty space with their chic shine. Immediately, many young people got out of the cars, greeted Jack in a friendly manner, and headed towards Linda's new boyfriend. The young man in white, who introduced himself as Julian, literally hung himself on Linda and her companion and asked what this rogue told her about himself, suggesting that these were tales about his family owning coal deposits after which Julian immediately turned his attention to Linda's new boyfriend, saying that he was a common liar who only pretended to be rich in order to get girls into bed. And then, returning to the others, the guy laughed and loudly added that the methods of this loser are as old as time, and it is completely unclear how anyone else could fall for them. Everything she heard plunged the girl into severe shock, where only thoughts swirled in her head about how she could have made a mistake with her choice. In a fit of rage, she rushed after her lover, shouting curses in his wake and wishing him a speedy death. And Jack, looking sadly at what was happening, just as sadly invited Angelica to return to the car, to which she agreed. But then his movement that had begun was stopped by Linda, who literally grabbed the young man's leg, accompanying her actions with words that she had made a mistake and requests to forgive her and give her another chance. But Jack, having silently listened to everything the girl tried to justify her behavior with, just as silently, with a sharp movement, tore his leg out of her hands. And as he left for the car, without turning around, he said that from now on he was cutting off all ties with Linda and asked her not to call again, not to write to him, and not to appear in his life at all. And Linda's new ex-boyfriend, who tried to quietly disappear from the scene, did not notice how he bumped into someone. It was Michael who said that he couldn't just leave here, since he would now give him a hundred slaps in the face for his friend. 
The day that began with a grandiose performance continued with young people in one of the city clubs, where the center of attention was Michael, who thanked everyone for helping him teach the mercantile girl a lesson today. Before the young man had time to finish his words of gratitude, Julian suddenly turned to him, who said that he had already heard about how Michael supported the girls on the online platform, and now he needed a little help. Realizing that he could only spend money on girls, the young man tensed a little, asking what exactly Julian needed. To which Julian replied that there was one girl on the platform whom he would really like to support, but currently he does not have the free funds for this. Hearing this, Michael, on the one hand, relaxed, and on the other hand realized that this was a great opportunity to spend money on girls and at the same time gain a foothold in the company of these rich boys. Here, Mark intervened in the conversation, saying that there is no need for a lone wolf to support anyone on the platform, and addressed not the most flattering words to Julian, and told Michael not to take the request seriously. Having listened to everything the young people said, Michael suddenly forcefully put his glass on the table. This attracted the attention of the entire company of young people, who became wary in anticipation of what might happen now. But Michael, having unlocked his phone, rolled it on the table towards Julian, saying that while he was going to the toilet, he could spend money on the right girl. The young man never expected such a turn of events, where he would be so easily trusted to manage other people's money at his own discretion. And satisfied, Michael went to the restroom, thinking that it would have been much worse if his company had asked him to pay the bill. In the restroom next to Michael stood a big guy, who was quite surprised when he saw the one standing next to him. Without further ado, the big man showed Michael an approving gesture, which greatly surprised the young man, who did not understand what kind of attention was coming from this guy in his direction. Upon returning to the hall, Michael saw a picture where everyone who was in their company had gathered around Julian and vying with each other, shouting and giving advice about how much more money needed to be transferred. He somehow managed to squeeze through the dense rows of spectators to look at what was happening. And Julian, who saw him, literally begged for salvation and asked the lone wolf to take the phone as soon as possible. Having fulfilled his requests and looked at the balance, the young man noted out loud with disappointment that he had been gone for quite a long time, but the guys were only able to spend 20 million. This did not go unnoticed by the company, which immediately once again wondered who this lone wolf was and what the condition of his family was. And Julian himself, wiping his sweaty forehead from exertion, said that he himself spent no more than a few tens of thousands of dollars at a time, but several million was too much. Michael suddenly said that probably 20 million is not serious, and the amount should be increased to 60, which completely shocked his new comrade. Julian hurried to approach Michael and, grabbing his hand with the phone, said that that girl on the platform was definitely not worth it, and there was no need to spend so much money on her. After everything, Mark approached Julian and said that there was no need to test the lone wolf. Such people simply need to be respected. After which Julian, raising his glass, asked Michael for forgiveness for his behavior and made himself available to the latter at any time of the day or night. And the conversations of the young people were watched from the side by the girls, who noted that the lone wolf must have a strong influence, since Julian himself, whose family is very famous in the city, gives him signs of respect. Suddenly Michael was attracted by a message received on his cell phone. Having read it, he quickly said goodbye and offering to continue another time, since he had urgent matters, left the club with a measured step. Looking after him as he left, Someone dared to say that Michael simply did not want to pay the bill, to which he immediately heard in response that a man who calmly spends millions in a couple of hours is definitely capable of paying the bill. Moving down the street, the young man typed a message to Marinda, who wrote that she had returned to the city, agreeing to her offer to meet. Michael waited a long time for this mercantile girl to ask him to meet, and now it's time to receive favor points reinforcement points and cash bonuses from what you spend on her. The next day, Marinda, who had just stepped off the plane, was walking and mentally preparing herself that this was just a date and she would be able to extract more money from the lone wolf. After all, she had absolutely everything a man could dream of. After the meeting, Michael and Marinda headed to the nearest cafe. There, they talked over coffee, where Michael was constantly distracted by his phone, where Veronica constantly wrote to him, asking for forgiveness. 
Because of this, he often simply did not hear what the girl told him and repeatedly asked her to repeat what was said. Of course, Marinda was very angry that the guy was not focusing his attention on such a beauty like her and thought about getting up and leaving, but at the same moment she remembered her boss, who would definitely not be happy if the lone wolf was missed. And trying on the most good-natured expression on her face, she continued the conversation, repeating her words that Michael is very young, but at the same time very rich, which is probably a consequence of the fact that he occupies a high position. Suddenly the system issued a message that Marinda's favorability score for the master was plus 60 points, and therefore the system could not register her, which was not very good, since all the money spent risked being wasted. The plan in the young man's head matured quite quickly, where he simply needed to lower his favorability rating a little, which he immediately did, sticking his finger in his nose and saying that he did not hold any positions, but was an ordinary poor man without an education. The girl, who did not want to believe it, embarrassedly said that the kind of money the young man has does not fall from heaven, which means that he at least has his own business. To which Michael innocently replied that he didn't have any business, he was just spending his father's money. But now his father's company had gone bankrupt, and now they owed creditors several million. And then, taking the girl by the hands, Michael added that he, in fact, met her for this purpose to ask him to return part of the money that he sent her through the online platform. This state of affairs, of course, completely drove the girl crazy, where she screamed that Michael was not a real man and was only acting like a rich man, although in fact he was a beggar, and the system immediately notified the young man of a significant decrease in his favorability rating. Taking out her phone and searching for the desired contact in her address book, Marinda said that she was just wasting her time with him here, and the system, meanwhile, continued to send messages about the rating downgrade. Finally, the girl dialed the right number and asked the man who answered, whom she called Jim, to pick her up from the cafe where some pervert was pestering her. And Michael, looking at the girl's actions, mentally concluded that he had met girls greedy for money before, but he still had to look for someone like Marinda. And it didn't take long for Jim to arrive, who, upon entering the cafe, immediately began shouting to leave his girlfriend alone. The girl, seeing the savior and his joyful face, immediately rushed to meet him, wailing about how the pervert grabbed her hand behind her back. But instead of taking Marinda into his arms, Jim suddenly walked past and moved on, where he approached Michael and, firmly shaking his hand, rejoiced at such an unexpected meeting and asked the young man, who did not understand what was happening, what he was doing here. Seeing that Michael did not recognize him, Jim reminded him that yesterday they were drinking together at the club with Julian. And then Michael remembered this guy, also expressing his joy at meeting him, and his new friend expressed regret that yesterday they were not able to have a proper walk, and therefore today he is giving a treat where he will not accept Michael's refusal. Marinda looked at everything that was happening with her shocked gaze, she couldn't understand how a man like Jim, whose family was at the very top of the rich, could suddenly be so kind to the poor Michael. The girl tried to approach him and say a few words, but Jim rudely interrupted her speech, saying that the lone wolf was a very close friend of his good friend. And then he said that this guy has more money than all the rich families in the city could ever dream of. Glancing sharply at Michael, Marinda suddenly realized that his words about poverty were nothing more than a test. Concluding that she needed to somehow rehabilitate herself, the girl came up and timidly asked Michael for forgiveness for her unworthy behavior. And Michael, listening at the same time to the system's message that Marinda had been added, answered her that he forgives her, since the girl is simply still young and stupid. Which could not but please Marinda, who expressed words of gratitude, and the system began sending messages about adding favor points. Michael thought to himself that it was not in vain that the girl went to work in online broadcasting, because as long as the client has money, goodwill will flow out of her like a fountain, which personally only benefits him. Here, Jim intervened in the conversation, angrily declaring that the lone wolf had already spent many millions on her, and she invited him to such a worthless café. After which he stood up and approached Michael and said that they needed to go to one of the best restaurants in the city, where, as they had already been told, he would treat him, to which the lone wolf, of course, agreed. After watching for a while how the guys were seated in the car, 
Mirinda decided not to miss the opportunity and announced that she was going with them. While they were heading towards the restaurant, the girl decided to make up for lost time and strengthen her connection with the rich young man, clinging tightly to him and taking his arm. In a gentle voice, she asked if the lone wolf was no longer angry with her. Where Michael, without looking up from the phone, said that of course not, and Marinda managed to note that he was going to go online. Once on the site, the lone wolf chose his next victim in the form of a beautiful dark-haired girl. And Marinda had no choice but to silently observe Michael's actions, waiting for their continuation. And what followed next horrified Marinda. However, not only she was in shock, the girl participating in the online broadcast, seeing the size of the transfer, could no longer utter a word. She fainted right in front of the cameras, where the film crew had no choice but to call doctors. Well, Marinda was literally tearing her hair out, thinking that these three million, which the lone wolf had just transferred, could go to her. But suddenly, looking at the attractive young man, she began to feel something different. Where Michael appeared before her as a very, very sexy young man, where his peak occurs precisely at the moment when he spends money. The girls clearly imagined how his fingers moved not on the phone screen, but on her body, and the voiceover announced to Michael that the girl's level of affection for him immediately increased by 50 points. He glanced sideways at Marinda, thinking that there was clearly something wrong with her, since her disposition was growing from the fact that he was simply spending money and not on her. Soon they were already in a restaurant where only the highest circles of society could afford to dine, and Jim especially noted that this restaurant was distinguished by three main features. Michael quickly guessed the first two, naming a non-trivial kitchen and a unique design. This earned him the praise of his newly made friend, who did not torment the guests with anticipation. And, pointing to one of the gazebos, he said that the third distinctive feature was that girl playing a musical instrument who is the daughter of the restaurant owner and has unique beauty. Hearing voices, Jessica looked up and saw Michael standing nearby. And the lone wolf himself never expected to meet his other girlfriend in the restaurant. And the first thing that caught Jessica's eye was how tenaciously some pretty girl grabbed Michael's hand. At the same time, it was announced that minus five points had been taken away from Jessica's favor, and the girl herself, in a fit of rage, even broke her musical instrument. She cast a sad look at Michael, after which, unable to withstand such tension from the surging feelings, she rushed away with tears in her eyes. There was very little time left before receiving the so-called cashback and reinforcement points, and Michael decided that it would be stupid to lose it all now, and therefore rushed after the girl. Possessing extraordinary abilities, he instantly caught up with Jessica, blocking her further path, and the girl immediately began to accuse him of playing with her feelings, where tears flowed from her eyes without stopping. The young man quickly tried to figure out what to do in this situation so as not to lose all his favor points. Deciding to risk everything, he asked if the girl knew about the very first rich man in their city. But the offended girl said that now they are talking about his betrayal and not about who has how much money. But the young man, having lit a cigarette, said that he was the same famous rich man about whom there were so many rumors, which was how he was able to slightly attract the girl's attention to his words. Exhaling smoke, Michael asked if she had wondered why he lived such a simple life in such a condition. And without waiting for an answer, he said that in their family, for more than one century, there has been a tradition where a young member of the family, upon reaching the age of 18, must spend $10 billion in a month in order to then inherit the entire fortune of $100 billion. It is for this reason that he diligently spends money, somewhere he invests in some incomprehensible projects that do not promise profit, spends huge amounts of money on charity. And concluding his fictitious story, Michael said that the girl who came with him was engaged in online broadcasts, and he, fulfilling his responsibility to spend, sent her a huge amount of money, which of course attracted her attention to him. Without even allowing the girl to come to her senses, the young man took her hand and said that no one knows his secret, and he does not expect understanding from her. He was just tired of living in secret and wanted to share it with at least someone. Without adding anything else, Michael turned sharply and walked away from the girl, shocked by such details of the life of a lone wolf. The mind of Jessica, who had come to her senses a little, 
began to formulate conclusions that she had no reason to doubt this young man because he was only trying to get an inheritance and was not cheating on her. For a few more seconds, she looked at the back of Michael as he walked away. But telling him not to leave, that she was wrong, Jessica rushed after him and pressed herself with all her might against his system-pumped body. Michael, continuing to play his role without a word, simply gently placed his palm on top of the girl's palms, pressing them to him. Jessica, clinging tightly to the young man's back, continued to think that Michael was so strongly attracted to her that he even dared to reveal a family secret. And in conclusion, she was imbued with the idea that this young man really loved her. And Michael was told that plus 20 points had been added to his favorability rating. Very soon they returned to the others, where Jessica apologized for the way she behaved. Which caused a storm of emotions on the part of Jim, who marveled at how cool the lone wolf was, who managed to change this girl's mood so much in just five minutes. But for Marinda, the appearance of a rival was completely unpleasant where she decided that she would do everything so that the rich man would go to her. During the meal, Marinda asked the lone wolf to introduce them to the girl he returned with. This flattered Jessica, who sarcastically stated that Michael, apparently, did not even tell her his name, since she calls him a lone wolf, which shows his disinterest in Marinda. Such directness on the part of the restaurant owner's daughter greatly surprised Jim, where he imagined Jessica in the role of some huge bird of prey, ready to instantly deal with its prey. Of course, such statements could not help but offend Marinda, and she was about to begin to develop the emerging conflict. But then, in his usual simple-minded manner, Michael intervened, who said that enough talking and it was time to continue the meal, after which the two embittered girls could only give corresponding glances to each other. Jim was very surprised at how much attention the lone wolf received from the girls and sincerely admired him where in his eyes Michael appeared simply as some kind of all-powerful demon tempter. Looking at the modest manner in which the young man ate, Jim came to the conclusion that previously he was fascinated only by the material side of this guy, but now for him he is becoming something like a spiritual mentor, from whom he needs to take an example in everything. After dinner, which, to Michael's delight, he didn't have to pay for, he moved down the street, studying how many points remained to be collected for each girl registered in the system. Suddenly, he saw a notification that another target had been added to the system. Opening the girl's profile, Michael saw the face of Christy, a girl with whom he had not yet had a chance to really talk. He walked, thinking that the level of her disposition towards him was very, very high, which showed his strong attractiveness in the girl's eyes. And then a conversation between two guys reached his ears about how one of the students was now declaring his love, and he needed to have time to look at this spectacle. Michael also wondered what kind of knight on a white horse decided to confess his feelings so openly. It was Billy, who was kneeling with his hands outstretched, clutching a large, beautiful bouquet. On the contrary, Christy stood in complete bewilderment and listened to Billy's words of apology and requests to give him another chance. Then Michael squeezed through the crowd, who immediately noted that the performance that Billy put on was nothing more than a cheap performance. Before the young man had time to appear, he was immediately noticed by Christy, who immediately became noticeably cheerful. Paying no more attention to her ex, the girl rushed towards Michael, where Billy had no choice but to shed tears and scream for the girl to come back. Approaching the young man, Christy first asked if she remembered correctly that his name was Michael and also expressed her most joyful feelings about the fact that they had met again. Without further ado, she said that she had sent a request to Michael to add her as a friend on a social network, and asked him not to ignore or reject it. And for Billy, it was a complete collapse of all his hopes, where he dropped his hands on the asphalt and bowed his head powerlessly. Gradually, he began to be overcome by rage, where he decided that he could not come to terms with this state of affairs and would take revenge on both Michael and Christina. And Michael, as if hearing Billy's bad thoughts, suddenly turned his attention to him. Coming closer, he supposedly told Billy that he now thought badly of both him and Christy, did not understand how this happened, and could not come to terms with what had happened. To which Billy reacted very sharply, shouting that Michael had also decided to mock him. But suddenly Michael said that in fact he had always been jealous of Billy. Where Billy is well-built, active in sports, and has earned female attention. 
but he immediately got lost as soon as he stopped being in the spotlight after Michael's victory in the tournament. And all because for Billy, only victory was important, where he trained hard for many hours a day, completely forgetting that he needed to devote time and attention to his girlfriend. Concluding his speech, Michael said that Billy himself pushed Christie away from himself, and if anyone needed to be hated, it was only himself. There was a rational grain in the words of his competitor, and now Billy fully realized this. And the crowd immediately picked up Michael's words and exclamations began to be heard from everywhere, where people came to the conclusion that it was indeed Billy himself who was to blame for the fact that his relationship had collapsed. But Michael's speech had the strongest effect, of course, on Christy, who was now only thinking about how well this guy understood her. And this guy, meanwhile, was listening to the message that the girl's level of disposition had already exceeded 90. Among this entire crowd, Jessica's neighbor Kate turned out to be an involuntary spectator of what was happening. Believing that Michael and Christy had some kind of connection with each other, the girl decisively moved into the dormitory, intending to immediately tell her neighbor everything. Jessica, who was making a face mask, almost jumped out of her heart when Kate burst into the room. She immediately began to tell her friend that she had just witnessed how some girl confessed her love to Michael. To which Jessica replied that Michael cannot and should not control the feelings of other people, and the fact that other girls are grateful to him for his help is quite normal. But Kate did not let up. Taking out her mobile phone, she showed her friend how much money the lone wolf spends on other girls and asked how she could explain it. To which Jessica said that she is aware of these expenses of his, since Michael mentioned them, and these are not all of his major expenses. Then she added that her relationship with Michael was built on trust, which completely discouraged her poor neighbor. Humming some song under her breath, Jessica left her friend with the thoughts that Jessica's falling in love and her conclusions were not smart. Michael yawned impolitely loudly, to which his companion told him to concentrate, but immediately heard in response from the young man that he had no intention of coming here at all. The girl sitting opposite recognized Michael and made eyes at him, asking if he was free that evening. And while his companion was trying to somehow justify the behavior of these girls whom in fact he had invited, Michael suddenly asked a question about what she was doing here, pointing somewhere. There, Veronica moved around the hall, bursting into tears. Michael's companion said that she found out that he would be here, so she came too, and then added that she was visiting a doctor after talking with Michael. After listening to his comrade, the young lone wolf decided that, apparently, he had gone too far with Veronica's revenge. He remembered the day when she caused him a very terrible mental wound. However, Michael was now coming to the conclusion that Veronica had truly redeemed herself and was repenting. He decided that she did not deserve to die for the insult that she caused him, and he did not turn out to torture the poor girl. Then the girls who were sitting nearby said that there was a rumor going around the university that he was that famous rich lone wolf. Which made Veronica turn all attention while Michael tried to respond to this. But suddenly a man's voice was heard from the side, saying that if Michael was really that lone wolf, then he would tear off his own head and play football with her. Moving towards Michael, a certain man said that whoever appears online under the name of a lone wolf spends millions, and Michael cares about every penny. Michael stood and silently looked at the approaching man, where he, without even taking the cigar out of his mouth, came almost close to Veronica, introducing himself as Richard, the owner of this store, and asked the girl for her phone number, saying that he had noticed her a long time ago. He was able to catch the attention of Veronica, who lately had been doing nothing but regretting her failed relationship with Michael, and she responded to his attention with a friendly look, while blushing a little. Taking a closer look at the man who appeared, Michael remembered that this was his sworn school enemy, who always boasted of the status and wealth of his family, and did not disdain any methods for resolving conflicts. Many times he and his minions beat Michael, without any principles or rules, without conscience and honor. And now, standing next to a girl who, as Richard knew, Michael had always liked, he literally provoked the latter with his gaze to respond. But the man decided that this time he would allow him to show off, since he didn't really want to show off in front of all those with whom he had gathered here today. In addition, Michael immediately had the brilliant idea to check how Frank Veronica had now become with him and whether she really loved him. 
Having come up with a plan, the young man stood up from the table and, approaching Richard, introduced him as his classmate in high school, where he and his family owned many companies and were filthy rich. After such a performance, everyone who kept Michael company today was amazed at what an influential person was now standing in front of them, where Veronica did not remain indifferent. Meanwhile, Michael continued, saying that he really is not the lone wolf that everyone talks about. His entire fortune is a couple of millions that he accidentally inherited. What was announced stunned Veronica, who until recently believed that her ex was the fabulously rich lone wolf. The girl was faced with a choice, where on the one hand there was a man with money, but she didn't really like her, and on the other Michael, who she really liked, but was not rich. And at that very moment, the system announced to the young man that 20 points had been deducted from Veronica's location, then another 20, and another. And in a matter of seconds, Michael ceased to be the object of her worship, which made him laugh a lot. And the childish girl had already communicated with Richard, saying that she did not mind giving him her phone number. Thinking to myself that in such a situation, even a complete idiot could make the right choice between feelings and well-being. Well, Richard, pleased with himself, without letting go of the cigar from his mouth, told Michael that anything can happen in life, where only his love gave him her phone number and is generally disposed towards him in every possible way. Then, approaching the young man closely, he whispered that at school he only beat him, but today he really smashed him completely. Michael, with restraint and without saying a word in response, listened to everything that his old enemy said. Having finished his boasting, Richard approached one of the store employees and said, pointing to Michael, that today this young man made him very happy. Besides, they studied together, and therefore everything should be free for him and his company. However, this gesture, like the previously spoken words, did not have the desired effect on Michael, and he laughed with all his might. Where people from his company were alarmed by such a sudden change in mood and asked if everything was fine with him to which the lone wolf, waving his hand, said that everything was fine with him, he had just finally sorted everything out in his head. Where the young man came to the conclusion that he had given Veronica a chance to fix everything, but she again stepped on the same rake, could not overcome her greed, and again chose money. Where from now on he will not believe a single tear, not a single word of this girl, because she does not deserve it. With these thoughts, Michael decided to interrupt his stay in this store and headed towards the exit. At the exit, he met Richard again, who said that their class meeting would be held tomorrow and that Michael could come there too. After listening to his old enemy, the young man thought that this meeting could be an excellent opportunity to get even and find new objects for the system. Turning around, he thanked Richard for the invitation and said that he would certainly appear at this meeting. And then tomorrow came where all the high school graduates had already gathered at the table, and Richard, in his manner, said that no one should deny themselves anything today, since he was paying the bill. After which he was showered with compliments and words of gratitude, in response to which he said that his former classmates would not forget to mention all this when Diana came to the meeting. Michael, for the time being, silently watched what was happening, noting to himself that this peacock Richard did not miss a single opportunity to stand out. And then the doors to the room opened and Diana appeared on the threshold, who immediately apologized for being late. She explained her delay by the fact that her personal driver was currently on vacation, and getting here by taxi turned out to be a little longer than she was used to. Michael looked fascinated at this beautiful girl, who throughout his entire high school studies was the only ray of light for him. Literally everyone at school wanted to date her, such a mysterious and incredibly beautiful girl. Without wasting a minute, Michael approached Diana, who had just managed to sit down at the table, and invited her to add him as a friend on the social network, which did not go unnoticed by Richard, who, of course, was not very pleased with Michael's actions, where he decided that he needed to humiliate him again, like yesterday in the store. Meanwhile, Diana immediately agreed to add Michael as a friend, while trying to remember what kind of guy he was. At the same moment, the system announced to him that a new object had been added, where upon reaching the required level, the young man would be awarded 35 reinforcement points, and knowledge of four languages would also be added. 
And while people were whispering everywhere that Michael had changed a lot since school and had become cooler, some girl suddenly said that he was not cool at all, since he was asking to be friends with the offspring of rich people and then stalking them. After which this girl said that all those with whom Michael is now communicating are real scumbags and have deceived many girls, where it is clear that their classmate has become the same. The young man sitting next to Michael shouted that the girl was now talking about some complete nonsense and it would be better for her not to disgrace honest people. But she became even more angry, shouting that one of these rich boys played with her and abandoned her, exchanging her for another. Now her heart is broken, and Michael will now sell Diana's contacts to one of these rich boys and she will suffer too. And while the girl continued this performance, the system announced one message after another to Michael, where each time Diana's level of affection for him fell lower and lower. And then Richard added fuel to the fire, saying that if Michael is so short of money that he resorts to such obscene ways of earning money, then he will have a job for him. But the young man had long ago realized that this girl and Richard had conspired and were acting in concert to destroy his reputation, which could not be ignored, since such rumors quickly spread. Taking out his cell phone, Michael wrote a message to Mark, who asked him to bring the phone he owned and bought as a gift for Jessica to the alumni meeting place. And now the official part of the meeting came to an end, where some thanked Richard for his generosity, others discussed where to continue this evening. And Richard himself, casting sidelong glances at Michael, thought that now he would not be able to look anyone in the eye anymore, which meant complete victory over him. Thinking that his rival had been eliminated, the young man approached Diana, offering to become her personal driver for the day and give her a ride home. But suddenly he was called out by one of the parking workers, who asked Richard to move the car, to which the latter reacted very violently saying that he had paid for parking and was not going to remove his car until he wanted to. To which the parking employee replied that according to the rules, payment from ordinary guests gives them the right to a place only until 9 o'clock in the evening, and after 9, clients with VIP status have priority. Richard could not imagine that there could be someone here of higher status and driving a more expensive car. Therefore, when he approached his car... He leaned imposingly on it and decided to wait for the one who, in the opinion of the parking attendant, was a VIP client. And then a red sports car drove up, seeing which Richard immediately noted that it cost more than $20 million, where he personally could only see such cars at exhibitions. And as soon as the car stopped, Mark, who was known throughout the city as one of the richest people, got out of it. Therefore, Richard immediately breathed a sigh of relief where he was incredibly glad that he did not conflict over a parking space, risking a quarrel with such a respectable person as Mark. But suddenly, in front of everyone, Mark approached Michael, shook his hand in a friendly manner and handed him the keys to the car, where the young man immediately hugged the newcomer in a friendly way, thanking him for being able to come to such a tribute, to which he immediately received the answer that they were friends, and it was an honor for Mark to drive a car for his friend. Everything that happened, naturally, did not pass without a trace for Richard, who was shocked not only that this very expensive car belonged to Michael, but also that a person like Mark was so polite to his classmate and carried out his instructions. And only now it began to dawn on everyone that in fact Michael is not as poor as everyone thought, and he definitely doesn't need to hang around with the rich and sell someone's contacts. And at that same moment, everyone turned their attention to the girl who was trying to humiliate the young man by telling tall tales and began to express their dissatisfaction with her deception. Diana did not lag behind the general mass, concluding for herself that apparently Richard and this girl had conspired to slander Michael. Meanwhile, Michael himself, accompanied by Mark, approached his old enemy and introduced him to the one who had just driven his luxury car and the girl had thoughts in her head that this young man was modest and noble, since he did not show off himself, and even now, even after he was seriously hurt, he behaves very dignified. And while the system announced to the lone wolf that first five had been added to Diana's disposition, therefore ten more and ten more points, Michael, without being at a loss, offered the girl a ride. To which the beauty of course agreed, being completely fascinated by the behavior of this young man, in a matter of seconds, they comfortably settled into Michael's car and quickly left the company of their former classmates. 
and Richard, listening to the conversations behind his back concerning him, could only cast angry glances in the direction where a luxurious sports car had just disappeared from view, which had taken with it all his plans for that night. An expensive red sports car dashed along the glowing night streets of the city, standing out sharply among the crowd of other cars. Only now the girl began to think that, under the influence of emotions, she acted very recklessly, getting into the car with a young man who was completely unknown to her. And Michael, the driver of the car, unexpectedly turned to the girl, where he said that he couldn't help but notice a keychain in the shape of a character from one of the popular cartoons. Surprised, Diana literally screamed, asking if the young man really knew what kind of hero he was and was watching this animated series. To which Michael replied that, of course, he watches this cartoon all the time, and this is his favorite character, since he has the coolest abilities, to which the girl immediately agreed, explaining that she had been watching this series for many years. After what was said, the young people looked at each other, which caused a very awkward pause. But after a couple of seconds, both of them were laughing at their stupor after discovering the same hobby. Looking at the girl's face, Michael was surprised that she could be so active and cheerful, where it turned out that her regularly distant and indifferent expression on her face was nothing more than a mask or some kind of defense mechanism. Looking at this joyful and happy face, the young man really wanted to protect this girl all her life so that she would always smile like that. Michael felt the emergence in him of some completely new, previously unknown feelings. Following the girl outside, the young man said, imitating the gesture of their favorite cartoon character, that he was very glad to get to know Diana from this new side. Replying with the same gesture, the girl said that she was also very pleased to get to know each other better, and then thanked the young man for giving her a lift. After which, for the second time, that same awkward pause occurred, during which the young people stood opposite each other, frozen in these funny poses. And again, after some time, they both laughed heartily at themselves and at each other. Michael said goodbye to Diana and headed to the car, and the girl thought that this young man was not like all the other men with whom she had interacted before. Before Diana had time to go home, she immediately heard the dissatisfied voice of her mother, who asked where her daughter had been going for so long. But before the girl had time to say a word in response, her mother continued, asking if her daughter had thought about that date. Where, without waiting for Diana's answer, the woman continued, reminding her that things were going badly in her father's company, they couldn't do anything about it, and they really needed new investments. And then, finally, the girl was able to object, asking her mother through tears why no one cares about her happiness, and why should she marry some playboy from the McEnroy family. But the formidable woman immediately objected, saying that she owed her family for raising her, raising her, feeding and clothing her. But if the business of the father of their family comes to an end, then the whole family will also have a very, very hard time. Then, after a short pause, the woman said more softly that Kevin McEnroe, of course, is not the best match. But after marriage, all men reconsider their priorities and behavior. Poor Diana had no choice but to stand and cry quietly, listening to her mother's harsh words, where her tears dripped directly onto the same keychain that brought her a lot of joy today. Meanwhile, Michael, who had returned to his dorm, went online, holding a bun between his teeth, where he intended to look for places where he could spend more money on girls. And then a news story caught his eye, where it was reported that the daughter of the Rockwood family was marrying the son of the McEnroy family. In surprise, Michael opened his mouth and his bun quickly flew down. Diana, his Diana, whom he liked so much and with whom he had such a great time, is getting married. The young man remembered how he used to yearn for this beautiful girl, not even daring to speak to her. In that distant past, he didn't interfere when he saw her walking with some other guy. But suddenly, clenching his fists, Michael literally took off, decisively heading somewhere where he decided for himself that this time he would not remain a passive observer as his happiness eluded him. At that moment, a woman saw the young man walking, and the man accompanying her suggested that this was Michael. Lost in his thoughts, the young man did not notice how someone blocked his path. Looking up, Michael saw a girl who, handing him her business card, introduced herself as Julia and offered to become an internet star. Without even looking at the card, the young man moved on, saying as he left that he was not at all interested. 
and Julia came to the conclusion that her proposal was rejected so decisively that it can be assumed that the young men entered into an agreement with another company. Rushing after Michael, the woman tried to stop him, saying that she had a stable company that guaranteed him a high salary. Where, having overtaken the young man, Julia said that the most important thing is that their company is supported by the well-known rich lone wolf. After which the woman said in an insinuating voice that if the young man did not sign a contract with them now, then the lone wolf would block all his opportunities for further development and growth. Michael, having listened to everything that was said, considered this woman very vile, thinking to himself that he was the lone wolf with whom she was now hiding behind. And the persistent madam did not even think of backing down, asking whether the young man had decided to cooperate with their company. Without saying a word in response, Michael took out his cell phone and quickly wrote a few messages. Julia continued her pressure, asking if the young man was ready to sign the contract. But suddenly her phone rang, where after picking up the receiver, Julia immediately received a good scolding from her boss, who told her to immediately stop doing what she was doing and go to the office. And while the annoying lady tried to somehow explain herself to the boss, Michael calmly continued on his way, where he only thought that he would not allow anyone to take Diana away from him, and the McEnroy family would bitterly regret that they had crossed his path at all. Meanwhile, the car containing members of the Rockwood family was heading to the designated location where a meeting with members of the McEnroe family was to take place. Inside the car, the mother continued to convince her daughter that this union is vital for their family, where Diana just needs to make friends with Kevin, who, according to rumors, is not such a bad guy. And then the girl saw a message received from Michael, where he asked about Diana's whereabouts. Replying that she had come to meet the McEnroy family, the girl also told the young man the exact address, to which he replied that he would be there soon. While Diana was texting, she remembered the face of Michael, who had just recently driven her home from a high school reunion. There was nothing even to think about here, since Michael was much more attractive than the one they wanted to introduce her to today. And then Diana's father intervened in the conversation, telling his daughter that he had never asked her for anything, but now he really needed the girl's help. The girl looked at her father and wanted to say something, but the words got stuck in her throat. The girl took a breath, sighed heavily, and said that she agreed to help her father and meet with Kevin McEnroy. And so the car drove up to the appointed meeting place, where they were already waiting for them at the entrance to the business center. The greeter said that Mr. McEnroy was already waiting for them, and he asked them to follow him to their office. And while they were entering the building, David McEnroy's assistant, looking sideways at Diana, concluded that the daughter of the Rockwood family was indeed a rare beauty. And he even feels sorry for the understanding that very soon the young gentleman with his habits will leave nothing behind this beauty. And then Diana, who was walking behind everyone, suddenly stopped, directing her gaze somewhere down. And her attention was attracted by the briefcase dangling in her father's hand, thinking about why such a bunch of documents were needed for a simple acquaintance. And so the doors to the office space were opened, and the assistant helpfully invited the Rockwood family to enter. Inside the room, Kevin and his father David were sitting at the table, where the latter warmly greeted the guests, telling them not to be shy, since they were practically one family, and ordered the assistant to serve tea. In this short period of time, Diana managed to notice an agreement lying on the table, where she could clearly read the word, Marital. Immediately, the girl realized that this was not just a meeting for acquaintance. Her father was planning something bigger. The McEnroy Family Corporation is one of the largest in their city and controls many areas of business, including supporting shadow projects. At the head of this multi-million dollar company is David McEnroe, who is famous for his willingness to do anything, even deception, in order to gain profit. And now this man approached Diana noting out loud that she had grown into a very stately and attractive girl. To which Diana, observing etiquette, responded to the man with words of gratitude, discreetly typing and sending Michael a message that she was in the office at number 305. The tycoon's son, Kevin, didn't take long to come up, and after greeting him, said that after seeing the girl once in a photograph, he lost the ability to sleep, thinking about her all night long. Snatching her hand from the not particularly pleasant and sweaty palms of this vile man, Diana somehow squeezed out words of gratitude in response to what was said. 
and the well-fed son invited the girl to go and sit down, trying to put his hand on some part of the girl's body. And so he reached his goal, where instead of placing his hand on Diana's back or lower back, he unceremoniously grabbed her right buttock. Shouting that such behavior was completely unacceptable, the girl turned sharply and hit the pervert on the hand, calling him a vulgar. And then the girl's father intervened in the situation, threateningly telling his daughter not to dare insult his partner's son. Diana was filled with anger, where she very much wanted to express a lot to her father, but she could not, and out of powerlessness, only clenched her teeth tighter. Then the girl's father turned to David, asking for forgiveness for her, and saying that she was just an unreasonable child who would be a good match for his son, to which Mr. McEnroy immediately replied that it was time to start studying the documents. And so the whole company sat at the table where the assistant explained something on the documents, and Kevin could not take his eyes off Diana. And suddenly, the assistant said that, in accordance with the agreement, the McEnroy Family Company transfers $100 million to the Rockwood Family Company to purchase 20% of the shares, provided that Diana becomes Kevin's wife. The shocked girl listened as the assistant added that the tranches would be staged, with the last one arriving when Diana gave birth to an heir. Snatching the paper from the assistant's hands, the girl, fluently reading the lines, shouted that there could be no talk of any marriage, much less children. Abandoning her reading, Diana looked at her father with eyes that instantly became wet, accusing him of deceiving and trying to sell her daughter. Her mother approached the girl and tried to calm her daughter down, but Diana shouted that she was not going to calmly watch how she was being sold now. Through the tears streaming down her face, the girl said that she did not understand such an act of her parents only because of some problems with the business. And then, in another fit of rage, Diana shouted that it was no secret to anyone that Kevin was a pervert and a drinker, and she would never marry him. And immediately after these words, the girl's father rose from the table, who, approaching his daughter, gave her a good slap in the face. Holding her cheek burning with pain, Diana looked through her tears at the face of her father, who raised his hand to his daughter. But he did not even think of admitting his guilt where he called his daughter a spoiled child who thinks only about herself and not about her family. Looking at her father with a disappointed look, the girl said that under such and such circumstances, she was definitely not thinking about her well-being. And then the girl's mother again intervened in the situation, saying that the father was doing all this only for the good of their family, where she again tried to say that if their business fell, their family would fall too. But Diana interrupted her speech, saying that if their company is going through difficulties, then why don't their family unite and overcome them together, where it is not at all necessary to sell their daughter? And suddenly the girl's mother fell on her knees in front of her, wailing that she was begging her daughter to accept the indicated conditions. This greatly surprised not only Diana, but also everyone else present in the office. Demanding that her mother stop humiliating her, the girl asked her to get up from her knees, but she refused saying that she would stand there until Diana agreed to the marriage. Realizing that she was now being put in an absolutely hopeless situation, Diana tried to find some words but could only make some isolated sounds. The future groom also joined in the persuasion, who said that the girl did not need to bring her mother to such a state, and that he really, really liked her, where he would become a good husband for her. And so Diana realized that apparently this was her destiny, where being born into a family like Rockwood initially imposes responsibility on the child to the family. Where now she will be forced to voluntarily enter this cage, where there will be a lot of money, but there will be no freedom. Having lost all will to resist, Diana said that she agreed to her family's conditions and again asked her mother to get up from her knees. At the same moment, the mood of her parents changed, where the mother called her a good girl, and the father admitted that he got excited, but only because he loves his daughter very much. Well, David, lighting a cigar, laconically said that since there were no more objections, he proposed to complete the deal, which the head of the Rockwood family supported with great pleasure, immediately grabbing his briefcase. And the head of the McEnroy family added that the sooner the contract is signed and the wedding takes place, the sooner the money will be credited to the account. Kevin didn't care about contracts. All his perverted attention was focused on the beautiful girl, where all he did was imagine how well they could have fun with her in bed. 
This is how the deal to sell her daughter was completed at the table, where the subject of today's deal. Diana did not return to the table and stood on the sidelines, quietly accepting her fate. But suddenly, from a strong blow, the front door to the office shattered into small pieces. Both Diana and all the other people gathered in the office turned their heads sharply in the direction where the roar was heard. And Michael, who more than spectacularly appeared on the threshold of the office, asked who the fearless groom was. When Diana saw her savior, her face immediately brightened and hope began to glimmer inside. The groom did not keep himself waiting, and expressing his lack of understanding of where this impudent man had come from, rushed towards Michael with the intention of striking him. But only when he was at arm's length did the overly well-fed groom meet with such a blow that the pervert flew several meters back, scattering chairs with his bulk. Michael, imitating the way smoke flowing from the barrel of a gun is blown away, told the groom who had flown away that now he could go complain to Daddy. Having shouted that they were beating a member of a respected family, Kevin instructed the bodyguards to deal with the impudent man, which they immediately rushed to do, showering Michael with choice curses along the way. And the young man said with a grin that he didn't see any respected families here, but saw two old men, one of whom was selling and the other was buying a beautiful girl. But if now anyone dared to even lay a finger on him, the mention of their families would disappear forever from cities. Practical and not stupid, David quickly realized that this deal was strictly confidential, and none of the mere mortals could find out about it, and therefore stopped the bodyguards rushing towards Michael. Peering closely into the face of the young man who appeared, the man from the height of his life experience concluded that not everything was simple here. Approaching the young man, David said that he did not know his last name, but that he would be glad to pay a visit to this brave young man, but that Michael immediately replied that the man was not of the right status to pay him visits. After these words, the unfortunate groom tried to intervene in the conversation, saying that the impudent man did not dare talk to his father like that, but Edward himself stopped him, threateningly reminding his son that he needed to think ten times before saying anything. Michael, meanwhile, turned to Diana, saying that she had nothing to worry about, since he would help both her and her family. Looking at her savior with a grateful look, the girl agreed to accept any help. And the young man had already managed to approach the table, where he picked up the contract and began to study its contents under the exclamation of the girl's father, so that he would be careful with the important paper. Having reviewed the document, Michael, grinning, addressed Mr. Rockwood that he was underestimating his daughter deciding to sell her for only $100 million, where he clearly made such a rash decision either because of old age or because of problems with his head. After which, tearing up the useless paper, Michael said that he was offering to give their family $500 million and purchase 60% of the shares, where what was voiced could only shock a person who completely lacks any feelings. And the experienced David immediately calculated that in order to cash out such an amount, this guy's company must have an income of about $10 billion. Looking closely at the unusual guest, the head of the McEnroy family mentally concluded that he was able to read people like an open book, but not this young man. The greedy, careless father, who had just nearly sold his daughter to a pervert, thought only that with such investments he would not only revive the company, but also expand his activities. But then Michael added that he was not going to give them that kind of money just for beautiful eyes, he had one condition. Where turning the young man, sharply throwing out his hand, pointed in the direction where Diana stood. Where, after seeing this gesture, the poor girl came to the conclusion that now Michael wants to buy her, only for five hundred million. Unable to bear such shock any longer and concluding that Michael was just like the others, Diana almost fell to the floor. With thoughts that this seemingly normal guy also perceived her as a commodity, the girl began to cry again, and again the salty liquid dripped directly onto her favorite keychain. But what was voiced by Michael next stunned the girl, because his condition was that these 60% of the shares should be registered in Diana's name. And as soon as this is documented, the promised 500 million will immediately be credited to the account. Everything she heard resonated like wild waves of joy inside the girl, who found hope for the second time today. After all, everything that happened once and for all unlocked all the locks and opened for her the path to the cherished freedom and happiness. 
Diana has become convinced that real superheroes exist, and Michael is one of them. And while all these thoughts were running through Diana's head, whose face was now flooded with tears of happiness, the system announced to Michael that the girl's favor had increased by plus ten and by plus ten and again. In the shortest possible time, a new contract was prepared, which the McEnroy family assistant presented to the girl for review and signature. Where Michael had to help the discouraged Diana sign a document, saying that from that moment on, no one could tell her what to do anymore. And as soon as the signature was placed, the girl's mother, having received the message, loudly announced that $500 million had been deposited into their account. Diana's father, not hiding his joy, approached the young man and asked if this was really the only condition, to which Michael replied that he did not understand what he was talking about. But having decided to teach the unscrupulous father a lesson, the young man leaned over and whispered in his ear that he only thinks about the prosperity and decline of his company, and if he suddenly tries to force Diana to do something that she doesn't want, then he will show how thin the line is between these words. After which Michael approached the girl and, saying that they were done here, offered to leave this nasty place. But then David appeared on their way, who on behalf of his son apologized to the young man where the head of the McEnroy family was impressed by how this young man easily transferred 500 million, which only a few could afford in the whole world. Where the man concluded that the young man is very influential, which means there is no point in starting quarrels with him. What was dissatisfied, of course, was the groom, whose wedding had just been disrupted, and began to scream at the top of his lungs that the uninvited guest had started it first. However, the father's slap loudly interrupted the speech of the unlucky son, where, against the backdrop of the leaving couple, David shouted that he should have given this unscrupulous boy a good spanking long ago. After leaving the office, Michael and Diana got into the young man's car parked nearby, where the girl was finally able to thank her knight. But the young man, trying to turn on the radio, said carefreely that there was no need for gratitude, since this was not the first time. And then Diana remembered the events of one late evening when she was returning home on a bicycle through the dark streets, where at some point she was surrounded by a crowd of bandits who first inquired about the girl's money. But without waiting for an answer, they immediately indicated the true purpose of their attention, where they said that they also accepted in kind. Diana didn't even have time to understand anything when someone suddenly rushed at one of her offenders, knocking him down and shouting to the girl to run. Trying to hold back the robber, the guy shouted for the girl to quickly run away without looking back, which she successfully did while the gang took out their anger on the homely savior. Then the girl was too scared, and it was already quite dark on the street, so she didn't even know who saved her. When Diana brought the police to the scene, all they found was her bicycle, on which apparently the bandits also took out their anger from the lost loot. Now sitting in Michael's car, the girl said that she no longer hoped that she would ever meet her savior. Where in her life she would never have guessed that he could be Michael, and the system had already begun its announcement of an increase in location. Michael looked in fascination at the girl ready for a kiss, hearing that his benefit from spending on this girl amounted to 50 million, added 35 gain points, and knowledge of four languages. Where after listening to all this, the young man seemed to freeze in place from surprise, but having come to his senses, Michael was very surprised that everything happened so quickly, where he did not have to invent anything or resort to any tricks. Which in general was very good, considering that now the girl is ready for real rapprochement. Michael immediately remembered something from the distant past, where he told himself that he would not let him down, he would not miss his chance, since now he had the strength and opportunity with which he would show his feelings. Behind these thoughts, the young man did not notice how he found himself very close to the face of the girl he had saved twice, where there were only a few centimeters left before their lips touched. However, the beautiful conclusion of today's events was unceremoniously interrupted by the young man's phone ringing. At the other end of the line was Jessica, who told the young man that she had already moved into the villa and then asked if he knew what would happen tomorrow. Thinking that the girl called at the wrong time, Michael nevertheless said that he remembered her birthday and even had already prepared a gift. However, the girl asked him to do without expensive gifts this time, since there would be a lot of not very wealthy classmates at the holiday whom she would not want to put in an awkward position. 
to which the young man replied that in this case he would have to think carefully about what to give her, where he imagined that instead of this expensive car, he would show up for his girlfriend's birthday in a house bought for 60 million with some nondescript painting. This is not how he imagined his appearance at this rich girl's party. Only now did Michael realize, glancing in the direction where Diana was sitting, that she had not said a word and had not even asked who called him. Deciding that it would be better not to hide anything, the young man said that a classmate had just called him and invited him to her birthday, after which he invited Diana to join him. Where Michael calculated that if he invited her to go, this would eliminate all suspicions, but if she agreed, then something would need to be thought of. However, the girl refused the invitation, saying that tomorrow at home there would be a large-scale discussion of today's events in peace and a holiday with Michael's friends, whom she does not know. Diana thought to herself that some questions are better left unanswered, so it's better not to ask. The young man said that he was very sorry that she could not go with him, since the girl would outshine everyone there, to which she replied that next time she would definitely accept his proposal. The young man himself, who seemed to have shown politeness, was inside rejoicing at the refusal since consent would have been much more problematic. Diana was immersed in her thoughts, concluding that various beauties always hover around rich and successful men, but no one could take this gentleman away from her. Saying goodbye on the street, Diana once again thanked her savior, simultaneously apologizing for the fact that he spent so much money for her sake. And the resourceful young man, approaching the girl, said that if she was so worried about it, she could always share a percentage of the profit with him. However, instead of answering, Diana suddenly approached Michael and kissed him on the cheek. After which, the girl, already leaving, turned around and said that this was his percentage, where with these actions, she left her mark on Michael, which means now he belongs to her. Not knowing what to say to all this or how to react, the young man simply stood there, thinking that this girl was perfection, the day turned out to be busy and humming some melody under his breath, Michael walked to the car, thinking that it would be nice to play video games now. But suddenly his attention was attracted by a painfully familiar female voice, calling him by name and asking if it was his car. Turning around, the young man saw that Veronica was standing in front of him in the company of a friend. Without saying a single word to the girl, Michael quickly got into his car. And pressing the gas pedal all the way, he quickly left the place of farewell to the wonderful girl, which a minute later became the place of meeting with the one whom he could no longer respect. And then her good friend, standing next to Veronica, concluded that it seems that last time Michael lied about his poverty, simply testing his love, which immediately reached the girl who had missed hers, who remembered how she behaved then in the store, choosing the latter between sympathy and money. Immediately, Tears of despair appeared in her eyes, where Veronica was now fully aware that she had completely ruined everything. Throwing herself on her friend's neck, she screamed in hysterics that this time Michael would definitely not forgive her. And the friend, somehow not at all friendly, agreed that now Veronica has no chance, but she can try herself. What she heard greatly angered the girl, who, grabbing her friend's hands, shouted and asked, since when had she suddenly become interested in Michael? to which the ex-girlfriend replied that he was attractive, rich, and she did not see a single reason to deny herself the opportunity to be with him. And then the girl added that, apparently, he was simply tired of Veronica, but her friend was quite willing to please him, which completely infuriated the girl who had made the wrong choice. Jumping up to her friend, she called her cheap, reproaching her for trampling their long friendship with her selfish interests. But the attacked girl did not remain in debt, and in response, grabbing Veronica by the hair, she returned her insult, adding that it was not she, but Veronica who jumped on Richard's fat wallet. After which mutual insults and threats of physical violence rained down, and tufts of hair flew in different directions. The girls were already rolling on the asphalt when random passers-by started pointing phone camera lenses at them. When the fight ended, Veronica slowly trudged down the street, wailing that she had now lost everything, both her boyfriend and her friend. Remembering her beloved, the girl thought that the more handsome he became, the more they moved away from each other. Bleeding with tears, slowly walking down the street in dirty and sometimes torn clothes, Veronica came to the conclusion that getting Michael back was becoming unrealistic. 
and then Julia suddenly appeared in front of the girl, who, clutching a business card in her hand, said that she shouldn't cry. Handing Veronica her card, Julia invited her to become an internet star. And as a trump card, she added that if she wants to get her boyfriend back, then she has a great idea about this. Michael sat in his dorm room and thought about what to choose as a gift for Jessica. Rising from his seat, he was about to go shopping in his search, when suddenly his neighbor said that Veronica now runs her own channel, where she shows something new. Not believing his ears, Michael jumped to the monitor and saw his ex, who, wiping her tears, told the whole world about how he ran after her. Where the girl ended her story by saying that ultimately he no longer needed her. Michael's neighbor wondered if she really had something with a lone wolf, since the girl called that name, and Michael thought to himself that she was a natural bitch. Where beyond any shame, this traitor managed to make herself a victim in this story. However, after thinking a little, the young man came to the conclusion that Veronica herself would never have thought of such a thing. Reaching for the phone, he was already unequivocally convinced that someone had advised her to hide behind a lone wolf and present herself as a victim. Having called the right person, Michael asked him to find out what kind of company was broadcasting live broadcasts at the internet address he had specified. A couple of minutes later, he received a message indicating the name of the company, and Michael immediately remembered that it was on behalf of this company that the abnormal Julia accosted him on the street. This time, the young man decided that there would be no mercy for this unprincipled woman. Meanwhile, comfortably lounging on a chair with a cup of coffee, Julia informed her boss that popularity indices had increased many times since Veronica's broadcast. She remembered a recent conversation with her boss, where he reproached her for threatening the Night Wolf himself, who could ruin their entire company, to which Julia replied that there was just a student there. And the boss, raising his voice even more, shouted that this student was a lone wolf, which Julia couldn't believe, because from the guy's appearance she would never have said that he was capable of spending tens of millions. But the boss opened his laptop and showed the collected information, explaining that a certain Veronica was his first love. He had been pursuing her for three years, but now they broke up. Which greatly pleased the enterprising woman, who decided that this was an excellent coincidence of circumstances where a lone wolf would never forget his first love, and this should be used. Where, according to Julia's plan, Veronica should become popular, which will cool the guy's ardor, where he will understand that it was in vain to refuse her cooperation. But suddenly her phone rang, where the words heard in the speaker struck like thunder, as it was said that their company was blocked throughout the internet. In parallel with these events, Michael typed and sent a message that he did not like the company that was now broadcasting false information from Veronica, to put it mildly and he would be grateful if this company disappeared once and for all. And so, the next day, something unimaginable began all over the city, where some people doubled the fees of the stars, luring them to themselves, others terminated contracts with Julia's company. Still others checked information about tax evasion, and still others took on the task of liquidating all assets. After Michael's message, the days of this office were numbered. And now Julia's assistant had already informed her that all the major shareholders had withdrawn their assets, and now the company had to pay them ten million, which the woman naturally did not have. Completely broken and destroyed, penniless, Julia could only wonder who could have arranged all this. The creditors were quick to remind us that the loan payment was already six months overdue. Following them, the stars arrived, who were broadcast on the internet by Julia's company and said that they were quitting, wishing the former boss good luck. And when the woman returned to her office, she was also reminded that she needed to pay the rent, where if she failed to pay on time, the rental agreement would be terminated. And so, in the evening, Julia and her assistant were taking out the last remaining property they had from the completely destroyed company. Bursting with tears, the woman came to the conclusion that all this was the work of a lone wolf. Only he had connections with whom it was possible to do such a thing. Michael, reading the message about the complete liquidation of the company, smiled and said to himself that he would need to somehow thank those to whom he turned for help in this matter. After which the young man got into his luxury car and decided that it was time to sort out the gift to Jessica since there was less and less time left before the start of the holiday.
But suddenly a sharp blow on the side window literally made the young man jump in surprise. It was Julia, who said that she had made a mistake, next time she would be smarter, and asked the lone wolf to give her at least some chance of survival. Michael was in complete shock because suddenly the system announced that a new object in the person of Julia had been added. Making a more than serious face, the young man said that it was only a warning where the woman should never come into his sight again. After which he pressed the gas pedal and the car took off, leaving the ruined woman completely alone and with the thought that this lone wolf was very handsome and courageous. Where she was especially turned on by the rudeness on the part of the young man. Michael, in the car speeding off into the distance, could only be surprised at how the system announced an increase in Julia's location, which was completely absurd in such a situation. Jessica's guests admired her new villa, making various assumptions about how much such a property could cost. The hero of today's celebration timidly walked among the guests, every now and then answering the voiced questions that she was not the daughter of a secret billionaire. But suddenly one of the guests asked if this villa really belonged to Jessica, where the girl explained her doubts by the fact that she and her father were present at the auction, where this house was bought by a certain man who had nothing to do with Jessica's family. Kate, who was also present among the guests, stood up for her friend and answered Patricia, who was Jessica's sworn enemy, that the latter was not going to deceive anyone here. But suddenly Patricia had support in the form of a certain young man, who said that he also knew about the sale of the house to that man, since he was present at his daughter's birthday, which was the reason for the purchase. At that very moment, rumors began to spread among the guests that Jessica, apparently, was just the kept woman of the gentleman who bought the house. But suddenly, with a loud bang, someone placed a document on the table indicating ownership of this villa. It was Kate who crossed her arms victoriously, telling everyone that, in this document right now, everyone can see the name of the owner, who is Jessica, which immediately silenced their opponent, who lost this fight. Likewise, the people around immediately changed the direction of the conversation, declaring that they did not doubt Jessica's integrity one bit, and did not even realize that her work was so profitable. Jessica herself, not really paying attention to the conversations of those gathered, was only thinking about why the one she was waiting for so much had not yet arrived. Meanwhile, Michael had already reached the place of the birthday celebration, and was getting out of his car, clutching a gift. Remembering that Jessica asked not to stand out, the young man left the car away from the house and continued on foot. The noise of a powerful engine behind him attracted the young man's attention. But before he even had time to turn around, a luxury sports car rushed past, almost hitting him. The car stopped right in front of the entrance to the house, causing everyone's admiration. Where Paul Mitchell, the most popular guy at the university whose family was also far from poor, got out of the car, explaining on the phone the location of the villa. Noticing a nondescript and modestly dressed guy with a teddy bear, Paul was mentally surprised, thinking that Jessica's taste was definitely not all right since she invited such a ragamuffin. And then the birthday girl herself appeared on the street, who joyfully exclaimed that her long-awaited man had finally arrived. To which both Michael and Paul turned, respectively, where each of them took what was said personally. Without wasting a second, Jessica ran towards her, where Paul prepared to take her into his arms, also saying that he missed her, but with a deft movement, the girl avoided the hug and continued on her way. Where she stopped only next to Michael, who in front of his shocked rival, congratulated the girl by presenting his modest gift. Some guests were no less surprised, looking at how the birthday girl rejoiced at a simple teddy bear, while she did not react in any way to their gifts, such as branded watches and handbags, succinctly thanking them for their attention. Paul stood thinking about the fact that he had been trying to look after Jessica for a very long time, which had not brought any results, and then some upstart suddenly captured all her attention. While he was thinking about his failures and his new rival, a small van drove up to the house. Squinting his eyes maliciously and smiling, Paul mentally noted that now the time had come for him to leave. Approaching the girl and diverting her attention from Michael, the young man said that he had also prepared a gift for her where meanwhile the loaders were removing something very large and heavy from the back of the car. Looking at how his rival watched the extraction of the gift, Paul noted to himself that now he would show where the place of this upstart was. 
When the gift was delivered to the room, unpacked and installed, everyone saw that it was a piano produced by one of the most famous companies in the world, which cost fabulous money. Paul, without leaving the girl, said that this would be an excellent end to today's flow of gifts. Then he added that he wished Jessica a happy birthday and asked if she liked his gift. To which the birthday girl replied that the gift was gorgeous, but since it was very expensive, she would return the money for it. Heading towards the musical instrument, Paul said that he would not accept any money from her. Where, having sat down at the instrument, the young man said that the gift was not finished yet, since he had written a song for the girl. All the girls around noted with delight that an unforgettable sight awaited them now, since Paul had won the music competition last year. And so the young man put his hands on the keys and the room was filled with the beautiful sounds of music. Where, parallel to the melody, the room was also filled with remarks from the guests, celebrating the excellent performance. When Paul finished, Jessica came up to him and said that he was playing just great, where she was even somehow embarrassed for her more modest skills in the game. And so, wanting to completely crush his opponent, Paul suddenly said, turning to Michael, that if he also wanted to impress the girl, then he should play too. The opponent's plan immediately became obvious to the young man, who only grinned at this pathetic attempt to gain superiority. Moving forward to the musical instrument, Michael told Paul that he could not refuse the request of such a respected person. Jessica stood surprised that the young man could play the piano, and all the other guests began to discuss his appearance, by which one could not tell that he was a musician. Of course, the young man who sat down at the piano had never even stood next to such a musical instrument in his life, but he had something no one else could even dream of, a system and its reinforcement points. Looking sideways at his opponent, Michael mentally noted that today this guy would not be able to look beautiful at the expense of the reputation of others, after which he ordered the system to provide him with the skill of playing the piano, which corresponds to practice lasting 50 years. The system completed its task and the young man got ready to play music. Paul, who was standing nearby, suddenly felt some changes in the energy of his opponent, which greatly worried him. And then Michael's fingers began to deftly move over the keys of the piano, extracting from it a sound that was already familiar to everyone, from which Paul's eyes opened wide. After all, the same melody was playing that he himself had just performed, and no one else was able to remember it in such detail after hearing it only once. Not without a smile, noting to himself that he had already been able to shock his opponent, the young man also mentally said that the best was yet to come. And then his fingers began to increase the tempo of playing the melody, where Paul couldn't believe his eyes that at such speed the young man never faked a word. And the speed of Michael's playing continued to increase, as if exponentially. It began to seem to the guests of the holiday that not one person was playing, but a duet, and the performer had not two, but four hands. Where one of those present has already mentioned that this is a long-lost art of speed playing, which was possessed by one single maestro of the distant past. Where teaching such practice has always been famous for its particular cruelty towards the student. And once we master the skill, every note of the music literally hits the very heart of the listeners like bullets. And finally, the final chords of the work sounded, and Michael exhaling removed his hands from the keys of the musical instrument. All the guests at today's event stood with their mouths open and looked in amazement at the one who had just managed to amaze them all. Michael, getting up from his seat, took a cigarette out of the pack and lit it from the hot strings of the instrument. And the young man went straight to his today's opponent. Hugging Paul in a friendly manner, Michael said that he was actually playing well where he just needed to practice more, then success would await him in the future. Then, with one deft movement, the young man placed the cigarette he had lit into his opponent's mouth. And moving away from him, he said that the piano is an instrument for expressing feelings, and not a way to compete and seek favor. Without saying anything in response, Paul remained standing where Michael left him, with a cigarette in his mouth and with a feeling of complete defeat. And finally, all the spectators burst into thunderous applause, beginning to note that they now understand why Jessica is so nice to this homely boy. The hero of the occasion and the musical confrontation herself, looking at Michael, came to the conclusion that she was incredibly lucky with him, where he is not only rich, but also very talented. And while the young man was sitting on the couch and drinking juice, 
The system announced to him that plus five points had been added to the girl's disposition. Immediately after which the system reported that the level of favor had reached the required limit, where the young man was awarded all the promised bonuses. And from that moment on, Jessica becomes a devoted fan of Michael. And the last thing the young man heard in this announcement was the amount of his personal benefit from the expenses incurred for the girl, which amounted to a little more than seven million. Which could not but please the young man, where he noted that after all, this villa was not acquired in vain. After hearing all about bonuses and accruals, Michael sat and thought about where he should spend his reinforcement points, from which he was distracted by a familiar female voice, which uttered words of surprise at the young man's talents. Clinging to the young man's body, Jessica said that she was very happy that he was next to her today, and the resourceful Michael immediately replied that the girl could consider the musical masterpiece a second gift, and he was now very interested in how she would thank him. And only Paul sat quietly on the sidelines, thinking that today he had been defeated on all fronts. Suddenly those present perked up and information spread around the hall that Melanie Stone herself had arrived at the celebration. Michael and Jessica reacted to this by interrupting their dialogue. And then the figure of the very girl whose appearance had caused such a commotion appeared in the aisle. Melanie Stone was listed as the first beauty of their entire university, where she also served as president of the student union. But she was even more famous not for her appearance, but for her contemptuous attitude towards the male half of the planet's population, where for this reason the majority assumed that Melanie prefers girls in matters of personal close relationships. Because of this, and also due to the fairly close relationship between Melanie and Jessica, many were convinced that they were a love couple. But in reality the situation was somewhat different where in early childhood Melanie was attempted to be raped. The attacker did not have time to realize his plan, since the police, who were called when they saw the maniac dragging the girl into the bushes, neutralized him. Little Melanie remained safe and sound, but suffered mainly psychological trauma. But since then she has really hated all men. As Melanie moved around the room, Jessica asked Michael a provocative question about who was cuter, her or Melanie. To which the young man, showing maximum tenderness, replied that Jessica is the most beautiful of all the girls in the world. He thought to himself that, in principle, he would like to stay away from Melanie, since she was definitely not right in the head. Because he now needs fans, and not those who could potentially deal with him. And suddenly Jessica called out to her friend, saying that she was late and calling her over, which did not really inspire Michael, who did not want to get close to this girl. Coming closer... Melanie apologized to her friend for being late, explaining that there were heavy traffic jams in the city. Jessica, tightly grasping Michael's hand, immediately introduced him to her friend as her boyfriend. After exchanging greetings, Melanie was the first to start the conversation, asking if he was playing now, to which the young man answered in the affirmative, feeling extremely awkward next to this girl. But instead of words of delight, the evil girl said that she had already heard a lot about how Michael jumps around the university from one girl to another, where he is certainly talented in the game, but leads an immoral lifestyle, which ran like a blade through the young man's body. Of course, Michael was very indignant at what was said, but Jessica calmed him down, saying that Melanie had a sharp tongue, but a kind heart. And at that moment, the system made itself known announcing that Melanie had been added as an object where the current location level was about 80 points. What finally drove the young man crazy, where he complained that the system, apparently, was broken, last time connecting some kind of pervert, and now this killer of the male spirit. Beside himself with rage, Michael kicked the floor, mentally lamenting the fact that he had just exchanged a few words with Melanie and immediately earned minus 80 points, but that Jessica was looking on in surprise. Having calmed down a little, Michael, casting a sideways glance at Melanie, noted that he was turning into a womanizer after all. Where even now he is attracted by the beauty of this girl who is angry towards men, which, however, the young man immediately attributed to the fault of the system, because of which he pays so much attention to the opposite sex. The holiday continued, and it was already getting dark outside. It was time for the birthday cake, which Michael delivered to the hall amidst shouts of congratulations. According to tradition, Jessica made a wish and blew out all the candles on the cake with a strong exhalation. 
after which she and Michael cut the cake into individual portions. And when the treat was distributed and the birthday girl herself thanked her guests for their attention, Melanie asked to go away with her for a minute, which seemed very strange to Jessica since her friend's face was very concerned. Their conversation took place on the street, under the bright light of a huge moon, where Melanie, without foreplay, advised her friend to stay away from Michael, which provoked a logical question from Jessica. Why? To which the friend replied that it was obvious, where this guy at the university had already established relationships with many, and she did not want her friend to be left with a broken heart. And finishing the contents of the glass, Melanie added that she would graduate soon and plans to hand over the post of president of the students' union to Jessica. This news almost shocked the girl so much that she couldn't be found right away to be sure. After all, as for the functioning of the student union, in this regard over the past year they had many disagreements, where no one wanted to give in to each other. And now this impulse to give her such a high position made Jessica think seriously, where the first thought that came to her mind was that Melanie really was more into girls and, apparently, was attracted to her. Quickly began to wave his head and hands negatively, Jessica answered her friend that she was not sure that she could cope with such responsibility, and Michael was actually a very good and caring young man. To which Melanie, approaching the girl, sternly said that she did not recognize her, since before her deputy had been more demanding of herself and others, which in general would not change the decision on the transfer of powers. But Jessica, in a not very decisive tone, suddenly said that she was planning to leave the student union altogether in order to be able to spend more time with Michael, which embittered her friend even more, where she menacingly asked about where her friend's determination and perseverance had gone, adding that Michael was generally dangerous to society. At that same moment, the system announced to Michael that Melanie's level of favor towards him had dropped to minus 90 points, which made him almost choke on a piece of cake. He looked at the girls standing on the balcony, not understanding what he could do to deserve minus 10 points when he was just eating cake. And so the guests began to gradually go home, where the mistress of this house cordially thanked them for their visit and wished them a safe journey. Michael was also about to move towards his dorm, but he was suddenly stopped by Jessica's call, who, having caught up with him, said that she still needed to talk to him. After talking with the girl, the young man finally left her house, thinking that as soon as the level of favor increased, the girl began to seem even more beautiful to him. During the conversation, she simply suggested going to the cinema together tomorrow, but it was suggested in such a tone as if she was asking him to spend the night with her. Michael was very flattered by this attitude towards him from a beautiful girl. But his pleasant thoughts, feelings, and fantasies were interrupted by the sounds of a man crying. Turning around, Michael saw Paul sitting next to his car, roaring and wailing that the years spent not learning to play the piano were wasted. Seeing his recent rival in such a defeated state, Michael could not help but experience moral satisfaction. In one quick movement, he found himself on the hood of Paul's car, where he jumped up in surprise, calling the young man by name, and Michael expressed his pleasure that his name was so well remembered. Then, looking closely at his defeated opponent, the young man noted that there was nothing wrong with the fact that he had lost their little musical battle. The tone with which Michael spoke and his facial expression did not please Paul, who also shouted that such communication with him was unacceptable. Jumping off the hood of the car, the young man said that of course Paul was right, and then headed to his car, noting that he was so full that it was difficult to walk. But the young man, inflamed by the confrontation, did not let up, saying that he was ready to admit that Michael had surpassed him in playing the piano. But immediately taking out the key to his car, he continued that in terms of security, Michael is far from him, where probably he is not able to even pay for a taxi home. But the young man, who was no longer interested in further confrontation, simply walked up to his car, opened the door and began to get inside. Squeezing the key to his car so tightly that it shattered into several pieces, the young man stood and silently watched as his opponent got into a car that costs about five times more than his own. But then his feelings got the better of him, and Paul fell to the ground, cursing Michael and trying to understand where he got such an expensive car. And Michael himself had long been immersed in thoughts about what movie he and Jessica would watch tomorrow. 
and then his attention was attracted by Melanie standing on the side of the road. The night turned out to be quite cool, and it was clear that the girl was literally shaking from the cold. However, Michael concluded that this was absolutely none of his business, and this abnormal girl could even die from the cold, but it would not affect his feelings. It was with these thoughts that he drove past, leaving Melanie completely alone in the middle of the street on that cold night, and believing that now several more points of location would disappear, which he did not care about. But suddenly the young man, looking in the rearview mirror, pressed the brake pedal, where in the reflection he saw how several strong guys approached Melanie and began to pester her. Having surrounded the girl on all sides, the bandits took turns asking questions about why such a beauty was standing here alone at night and offered her their protection. Where one big guy, attracting Melanie to him, said that they would not take money from her for protection, but would prefer other ways to pay. However, neither the number of villains nor their intentions frightened the girl at all, who shouted for the bandits to leave until she called the police. But what was said did not have any significant effect on the guys, where they only laughed loudly and unanimously in response to her words. And apparently the leader of these robbers began to approach the girl, saying that with such an obstinate character as hers, their pleasures would only become more fun. But before he could finish his thought, a sharp pain pierced his entire huge body. The reason for this was a precisely targeted kick by Melanie in the place that the robber planned to use for pleasure, which all his henchmen looked on with horror. And while the man was screaming in pain, holding on to the injured area, and his team was trying to help with something, Melanie quickly escaped from the encirclement and ran away. Noticing that the agile prey was hiding from them, the wounded man shouted so that the others would not let her escape. And then several robbers rushed after the girl, shouting threats of violence if she did not stop immediately. Looking back to assess the distance at which the bandits had approached, the girl thought that they were like a pack of hyenas, and if there had been a little less of them, then with her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, she would have given them a good beating. Since Melanie was looking back, she did not see how Michael suddenly appeared on her way, into whom she crashed into with all her might. Looking at the out-of-breath girl, the young man asked if she was okay. To which Melanie did not answer anything, only mentally asking herself the question of what this guy was doing here. During this time, the girl's pursuers managed to catch up with the young people and surrounded them, slowly squeezing the ring. The angry gang leader, still holding on to his injured place, said menacingly that the girl would have to work for all this until the morning. Melanie looked at this man with genuine disgust, thinking only that it was simply impossible to be so disgusting. Then she turned her attention to Michael, concluding that if it weren't for him, she would have run away long ago and been safe. Well, Michael, turning to the hooligans, said that in today's reality laws already rule, and suggested that the attackers get out of his sight within the next two minutes. However, the leader of this gang said smugly that he was the law here, and the defender would now be in very bad shape. In the next couple of minutes, the quiet, cloudless night was well diluted by the sounds of blows, falls, and screams of pain. And finally, in the middle of the street, only Michael remained on his feet from the male half, who examined the defeated opponents. Shaking his palms off one another, the young man, looking at the lying leader of the gang, said that he should have listened to his advice, after which he turned to Melanie again, asking if everything was okay with her. But suddenly the system announced that another minus five points had been taken away from this girl's disposition, which came as a real shock to Michael. Looking at this strange person, the young man could not find an explanation for what was wrong with her and what he had done wrong to her because he was only saving the girl. Melanie remained silent for now fixing an extremely unfriendly gaze on her savior. However, Michael gave the girl an equally embittered look, where in his mind he said that he had just saved her, but her disposition not only did not increase, but also fell, which seemed to him the height of absurdity. And so, the rescued woman was the first to break the silence, where she pointed to the lying robbers and said that all this makes no sense. In an icy tone, she said that she would not fall for these outdated techniques, as others had fallen for where Melanie drew a logical chain from the moment where she stood at the bus stop and the bandits accosted her, to the moment when Michael suddenly appeared, supposedly to save her. After which she went to her savior, standing on the hand of one of the robbers along the way, and said that Michael's plan to seduce her had been a complete failure. And finally, 
Finding herself face to face with the young man, Melanie said that he had overestimated himself and underestimated her. Suddenly the girl with a sharp movement grabbed the young man by the t-shirt. Pulling the hero towards her, she shouted that Jessica was ready to leave the student union for his sake, and he suddenly decided to hit on her friend. After which, throwing the young man away from her with a rude gesture, Melanie, leaving, added that Michael was truly disgusting to her. For some time, the young man stood in the middle of the road, trying to somehow digest what had happened. But unable to bear it, he literally grabbed his head, screaming into the void and thinking that this girl had a real persecution mania. Calling out to the departing Melanie, the young man tried to explain that everything was completely different from what the girl had imagined for herself. But in response, she only heard that if he didn't come to his senses and start behaving normally towards Jessica, then she would find him and cut off one well-known place, which finally dissuaded Michael of the need to have any contact with this abnormal person. He allowed the girl to leave, remaining in the middle of the bandits lying on the ground with mixed feelings. But then one of the robbers began to come to his senses, raising his head and trying to figure out where he was and what had happened. But at that very moment, Michael was overcome by rage, where he, without even looking down, made a sharp kicking movement with his foot, where the bandit's head was unlucky enough to be in her trajectory, shouting that Melanie was just an ungrateful bitch. Without even noticing that he had just knocked out one of the bandits again, the young man turned around and walked away, hurling curses at the saved girl along the way. This is how the young man managed to walk all the way to the university. He could not stop thinking about what the ungrateful Melanie had said to him, continuing to address her with abusive words every now and then. He was distracted from his gloomy thoughts by the vibration of the phone in his pocket and the ringing melody that followed it. Taking the phone out of his pocket, Michael thought that someone was obviously late with the calls. As it turned out, Diana called, inquiring about the young man's plans for tomorrow. But before the young man had time to say a word in response, the girl, without wasting time, said that tomorrow she had a lot of free time and she was inviting Michael to go to the movies. Realizing that tomorrow he would also have a date with Jessica, the young man tried to object, but the persistent girl said that it was her first invitation, which he could not refuse. Michael had no choice but to accept the invitation, where he decided that it was simply worthwhile to distribute the dates so that they did not overlap in time. The next day, Michael was sitting in his car near the university dormitory. Sending a message to his friend, he asked where he had been staying for so long. After all, yesterday Jack was tearfully talking about how another girl refused to go to the cinema with him, and therefore he asks a friend to accompany him. Clutching his head, Michael smiled, thinking that his plans were changing at the speed of light, where tomorrow, apparently, he would have to watch not two, but three films. After all, Jack was his best friend, who helped him out more than once in difficult times, including with money. Therefore, the plan was built in such a way that at 14 o'clock, he goes to the cinema with Jack, at 17 o'clock with Jessica, and at 20 o'clock with Diana. Taking a heavy breath and then exhaling, the young man prepared for a mentally difficult day. And then the passenger door of the car opened, and someone sat in the seat next to the driver, where Michael expected to see his friend. However, instead of Jack, there was a girl sitting next to him doing her makeup. Noticing that the driver's attention was focused on her, the girl apologized, explaining that she was distracted and had the wrong car. To which the young man innocently said that it happens to everyone, told the girl to be more careful next time, and asked her to leave the salon, which would greet her in complete amazement. However, the persistent lady was not going to give up, saying that she may have gotten into the wrong car, but she hoped that she had met the right person. She thought to herself that she was not going to go out, because in this case she would not be able to pick up such a handsome guy in such an expensive car. And the next gesture towards rapprochement was an offer from the girl to add Michael as a friend on social networks, since in her opinion, everything that happened was fate. However, the imperturbable young man, looking at the screen of his phone, monotonously replied that he did not have a phone, which again brought the girl into complete amazement. Assuming that this was nothing more than someone's trap, Michael thought that he would definitely not fall into it, unlike many. The young man's last answer clearly touched the girl's nerve, and she irritably said that in that case she had to go. But as soon as she began to get out of the car, 
Her gaze met the gaze of Jack, who approached and asked the girl what she was doing here. Where both the girl herself and Michael were surprised by this strange coincidence of circumstances, and the young man who approached said in confusion that the girl refused to go to the cinema with him under the pretext of visiting her mother in the hospital, but she herself got out of his best friend's car. Michael immediately realized that this was the same girl because of whom he was going to the cinema with his friend today, and hoped that Jack would understand everything correctly. The owner of the car, who also left the salon, began to tell his friend that he would explain everything to him now. But Jack interrupted him, angrily addressing the girl that, according to his assumption, she was not at all familiar with the owner of the car. Where he continued, accusing the girl of simply seeing an expensive car and deciding to start flirting with the one who was driving, not knowing that he would turn out to be Jack's friend. Laughing joyfully and nodding his head cheerfully, Michael confirmed his friend's words, saying that everything was exactly like that. Without talking any more with this girl, who was pursuing exclusively selfish intentions, the friends got into the car. Where left alone, all she could do was think about what wealthy friends the one she had refused had. Which didn't fit in her head, where Jack seemed to her like a big loser surviving on $800 a month. But the friends very soon arrived at one of the cinemas in their city. All the spectators had already taken their seats and the screening of the new film was beginning. However, Jack was not at all interested in the film, where he asked his friend how he achieved so many beautiful girls hovering around him, to which Michael innocently replied that he could not constantly drive away those who were pursuing him. And the girls sitting behind noticed that the guys came to the cinema as a couple, finding it strange and assuming that they were in a relationship. Michael continued to answer his friend's question, saying that relationships are a battlefield on which one should never relax. Leaning towards Jack, the young man said that you don't need to try harder in a relationship, as you will be respected less and less. And in conclusion, the young man said that only men who are not very smart give money to women, while more practical men simply spend money on them. Thinking about what was said, Jack came to the conclusion that his friend's words had a certain meaning. Grabbing his friend's hand, the young man began to beg him to teach him how to treat girls correctly, to which Michael only tried to calm him down, saying that they were being looked at. But then she said that there was nothing to teach. He was just a little prettier than his friend and had a little more money. Where what was said greatly upset Jack, who responded by telling his friend to stop talking like that until they quarreled. At the end of the film, the friends walked towards the exit, where Jack thanked his friend for his attention and said that he was now in his debt to which Michael replied that he had the opportunity to pay in the very near future, where Jack would greatly help him out if he called him in two or three hours. And those girls, having noticed how the men held hands for the second time, made the final conclusion for themselves that they were in a relationship. Having received his friend's consent to help, Michael headed to the next date, where he needed the call in order to find a reason to leave one date and come to another. Very soon the young man arrived at the cinema where they agreed to meet with Jessica. Seeing the girl waiting for him to appear, Michael was mentally glad that he was not late. Jessica, looking at her watch, noted that there was only half an hour left before the start of the film and her boyfriend was still not there. But a man's voice heard behind her attracted the girl's attention. However, when she turned around, Jessica saw a completely different man than she had been waiting for, where the man introduced himself as Clark and asked the girl to add him as a friend on a social network. To which the girl, asking for forgiveness, replied that she had a date, which, however, did not stop the persistent guy, who said that adding him as a friend would not interfere with the date. But then, patting him on the shoulder, Michael came up and said that the girl had already refused him, and he shouldn't waste any more of her or his time. Winking at the guy and walking around him, the young man said that he would now demonstrate how to meet girls. After which he quickly approached Jessica, slamming his hand hard on the wall which sent the girl into a stupor. And he said that she was very beautiful, immediately offering to find a quieter place for a closer acquaintance. This manner of introduction did not at all impress the guy standing next to him, who noted that now for his opponent the matter would end in complete failure but suddenly the girl laughed and replied that she agreed to Michael's proposal, where Michael's rival and all the people nearby who witnessed the events could not believe that this approach really worked. 
On a huge cinema screen, the main character of the film changed the trajectory of the rocket with a kick. But Jessica did not care about the twisted plot, where she sadly looked in the direction where her companion was sitting. And finally, she asked if the young man was interested in watching the film at all, since she saw that he was constantly busy with his phone, to which Michael quickly found his way and replied that he was just having some minor problems at home. And then the girl was struck by the thought that most likely, owning such a fortune, her gentleman and his family were most likely under constant pressure, which simple people like her could not understand. Remembering how he played, Jessica concluded that all other people only saw his talents but did not fully realize the effort it took him to achieve such results. Where in an aristocratic family, through blood, sweat, and tears, he had to study a huge number of disciplines, in each of which he was obliged to become the best, where the young man never complained about this difficulty and simply silently carried this burden within himself. And then tears appeared on the girl's face, where she felt guilty for forcing him to watch a movie with her, when he, perhaps, just needed some other kind of rest. With a surge of emotion, Jessica placed her hand on top of Michael's, where this sudden gesture of hers caused considerable surprise in the young man. And when he turned around, he saw the tear-stained face of his companion, surprised by the tears, since she was not watching a melodrama, but an action movie. Being completely bewildered by what was happening, Michael did not know what to say or how to console the girl. When the film ended, Jessica and Michael were walking down the street, where the girl suggested they go and sit in some cafe, since she believed that the young man was hungry. And just as Michael began to answer something to his companion, suddenly a cell phone ringing was heard from his trouser pocket. In an instant, a picture flashed before the young man's eyes, where a couple of hours ago he asked to call his friend, where, taking out his phone, the young man was convinced that his friend had fulfilled his promise and fulfilled it at the most appropriate time. After answering the phone, Michael greeted his friend. But suddenly shouting into the phone that everything was so serious, the young man said that he was leaving immediately. Having disconnected, the caller himself did not understand at all what it was about now. Michael, after apologizing to the girl, said that he needed to leave because his friend got into some kind of trouble, to which Jessica responded with understanding. As Jessica watched the young man go, she thought that he was a very noble man, since he rushed to save his friend at his first call. Well, the noble man, once inside the car, marked himself as a genius, mentally telling himself that now he could go on a second date. The young man arrived at the house where Diana lived when it was already dark outside. Having sent the girl a message that he had arrived, he immediately read the response, where Diana told him that she was already coming down. And while Michael was waiting, his thoughts were focused on the fact that it is incredibly difficult to spin on several fronts at once, and such situations must be avoided in the future. But a pleasant female voice distracted the tired gentleman from his thoughts. Where turning, Michael saw the charming Diana in front of him taking a flirtatious pose and apologizing for the fact that she was a little late. Seeing today's image of his new companion, Michael was speechless. Looking at the girl, the young man mentally noted that she was simply an incredible beauty. Where no matter what style of clothing she chooses for herself, everything will suit her. Behind his thoughts about the beauty of the girl, the young man lost touch with reality, which Diana quickly restored by asking if he was ready to go, to which her gentleman responded positively. And while they were heading to the car, Michael was thinking that if today's date went well, then he could well count on a closer relationship. Soon the couple was already in the cinema, where they both watched the film with fascination and interest. The logical continuation of this wonderful evening was a visit to one of the best cafes in the city, and the young people finished their date long after midnight, where Michael parked again in the same place where he picked up the girl a few hours ago. Thanking the young man for the wonderful date, Diana wished him a safe journey home and headed towards her house. But before the girl had time to take even a couple of steps, Michael suddenly called out to her. Very embarrassed, the young man, using an old, hackneyed but still effective trick, asked the girl for permission to go up to her for water. Where, on the one hand, this state of affairs greatly pleased Diana, but on the other hand, the girl did not know whether it was worth inviting the young man to her place now. But after some ten, fifteen minutes, Michael was already taking a shower in the apartment of his second companion today, where the owner of the apartment herself was sitting on the sofa hugging a pillow, unable to understand what was wrong with her today, where she had never behaved like this before. 
After all, Michael only asked to go up for a drink, and in the end she leaves him at her place for the night because it's already quite late to return. These thoughts made the girl feel very ashamed of herself, where for some reason she gave permission for the young man to stay. And then her thoughts went further, where she thought about what if intimacy suddenly happened between them, where she caught herself thinking that she wouldn't even mind at all. But at that very second, Diana covered her face with a pillow, mentally scolding herself for these vulgar thoughts. And when she removed the pillow from her face, her gaze fell on the movie ticket sticking out of Michael's pocket. Having taken them out, Diana discovered that there were not two, but four tickets, immediately concluding for herself that the young man had also managed to go to the cinema with another girl. A few minutes later, Michael emerged from the shower, drying his hair and telling the shower owner that he was done. And almost immediately his gaze fell on four movie tickets lying on the table. Well, Diana, sitting on the sofa, said menacingly that these four tickets fell out of the young man's pocket, where she thinks that he also went to the cinema with another girl. Without allowing Michael to say a word in response, the girl immediately added that he had become a part of her life, but if he didn't like her and wanted to meet others behind her back, he could immediately say so and get out of here. Michael tried to say something in response to this claim, which although it was a guess, was a correct guess. But the girl suddenly stood up and pointing to the door, demanded that the young man leave her apartment, where, following the girl's words, the system announced that the level of favor had dropped by minus ten points. But not even a couple of seconds had passed before the system was activated again, announcing a decrease in the location level by another minus ten points. Michael understood that something urgently needed to be done, otherwise the object could be lost forever. Where, without thinking twice, he told himself that he had been preparing for a similar situation, and now it was time to act. Looking at the girl with a very sad look, the young man quietly said that he was very disappointed that just two extra tickets could undermine his credibility so much. To which the very angry girl replied that she was not going to discuss this at all. Then, taking out his mobile phone and dialing Jack's number, Michael handed it to Diana, saying that she could ask this guy if he had been to the cinema with him today. There was no categorical reaction from the girl, which meant that she was ready to accept the information. And on the other end of the line, Sleepy Jack was asking his friend why he was calling so late and would be his. But instead of a friend's voice, he heard a female voice introducing herself as Diana, who asked if he went to the movies with Michael today. To which the still not fully awakened young man replied that he really went to the cinema with his friend, because Inga, whom he had invited earlier, refused him. And only after finishing the story did Jack realize who was talking to him on Michael's phone at night. Looking at his mobile phone, the young man literally shouted questions into the phone one after another where he was interested in where the girl got his friend's mobile phone and whether they were together at such a late time of day. After which words of surprise were heard from the phone speaker that they were together at such a time. Apologizing for the disturbance, Diana passed out, looking at the young man as he dressed and wondering if she could have made a mistake or if Jack was simply covering for his friend. But then she remembered that she knew the same Inga that Michael's friend had mentioned, quickly finding and dialing her number. And when Inga answered, Diana asked essentially the same question regarding Michael and Jack's trip to the cinema, to which the girl replied that Jack really invited her to the movies, but she refused him, where he then left with the guy in a red sports car. And if only she knew that Jack had such rich friends, she would never have refused to him. Realizing that circumstances were now on his side, Michael asked if the girl had verified his integrity, or should she still be shown the card payment history. But without allowing Diana to say a word, the young man said that he was very disappointed in her and headed towards the exit. Diana tried to shout after him that she was wrong and would never do that again. But Michael had already left the apartment, finally slamming the door effectively. And only when he was out of sight of his second companion of the evening, he exhaled with relief and noted that he had just walked along the very edge. One of Michael's hardest days was over, and a new day arrived, where the sun had already risen high above the university. Having written a message to Michael with an apology, the girl received a response in which the young man took all the blame on himself, saying that he just needed to tell everything right away, and that it touched the girl in love. And when the system announced that all of Diana's favor points had been returned, the young man was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. 
Noting that there was even one point more than before, Michael, wiping his forehead from sweat, assured that he would not push himself into such stories anymore. Where for him it was a good lesson about the need to make an effort to separate everyone the system works with. He needed to clearly differentiate which of the girls would simply be at the level of useful connections and with whom he could think about a more intimate relationship. Having such opportunities, Michael shouted that he is one of the few who does not need to choose one from several girls, since with the system he can provide the needs of almost everyone. Moving along the corridor of the university, he suddenly overheard a conversation among freshmen who said that a certain Paul Mitchell, a top basketball player, had organized and sponsored a basketball tournament, which they decided to go watch. Hearing the familiar first and last name, Michael was surprised that this crybaby was called the strongest basketball player. And without thinking twice, the young man decided to attend this event, immediately heading towards the gym. The game was already in full swing, and the hall was simply filled with both fans and fans of Paul, who shouted at the top of their lungs that they loved their idol and wanted children from him. But Michael saw some kind of pretense in everything that was happening. And while the young man was thinking about his own thoughts, he was noticed by two very attractive girls standing nearby. Where Veronica only managed to note that Michael was present in the hall, while Angelica had already taken off, heading towards the object of her sympathy. The young man and the girl had already warmly greeted each other, and Veronica could only be angry at her sluggishness. But before any conversation could begin, Michael's attention was suddenly attracted by a touch on his shoulder. Turning around, the young man saw another object of his system, the athlete Christy, who concluded out loud that Michael also liked basketball. Watching as Michael was surrounded on all sides by the most famous beauties of the university, the freshmen standing nearby quietly shared gossip about what was happening and discussed the girl's external characteristics. At that moment, Jessica appeared in the hall accompanied by Melanie, where the latter, upon entering, managed to make a complaint to the guys, pointing out the inadmissibility of discussing the beauty of girls. Having walked a little further, Melanie noted that there was a terrible smell of sweat, to which her companion said that this was, after all, a sports competition. And so, having accepted the next serve, Paul suddenly saw that Michael was in the hall, where he was furious that he was constantly surrounded by the most beautiful girls, who for some reason did not pay any attention to such a handsome man as Paul himself. Noticing that Jessica had also appeared in the hall, Paul decided that this was his chance to take revenge for his defeat at the girl's birthday celebration. Where the young man thought to himself that he had been playing basketball for more than two years, and Michael would never beat him. Behind these thoughts, Paul threw the ball as hard as he could in the direction where Michael was standing. However, the reaction of the young man, pumped by the system, was more than excellent, where he immediately noticed movement on the left. With a light and calm movement of his hand, Michael stopped the movement of the ball. Looking menacingly at Paul, the young man asked how he should regard this gesture, perhaps as revenge for losing in a musical battle. To which Paul smugly replied that Michael thought too highly of himself, thinking about some kind of revenge, he also offered to fight one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Throwing the ball back, the young man said that he was ready to join the game without any problems. And Paul, preparing to catch the ball, noted that judging by the throw, his opponent had never played basketball in his life. But as soon as the ball touched the young man's hands, he was literally carried away exactly along the trajectory of the ball. Such was the force of this throw. Watching what was happening, Jessica enthusiastically noted that Paul himself, the captain of the team, was unable to accept a serve from Michael, and Melanie, in her own manner, noted that men can only rely on brute physical strength. Meanwhile, Paul was trying to get to his feet as players from his team asked if everything was okay with him. Throwing an angry glance at Michael, the young man wondered how this seemingly nondescript guy could have such incredible power. Well, Michael himself had already approached his opponent, who was on all fours, saying that he was ready to play five on five, where he would be able to assess the level of all the team players. Such a bold statement did not leave anyone in the hall indifferent. But most of all, Paul was surprised, who noted that all the players are his people, as are the judges, which Michael knows very well, but he still decided to play. However, this state of affairs on the whole suited the first university basketball player, 
since in fact his opponent would not be playing five on five, but one against nine. And so the teams were formed, the players took their places, and the game began. Taking the serve, Paul rushed towards the ring like a hurricane, giving instructions to everyone so that they clear the way for him. His only thoughts were that now he would smear Michael, that he would rehabilitate him in front of Jessica, who would see what a non-entity he was. And his opponent stood nearby, surrounded by players from Paul's team, who tried to deprive him of the opportunity to maneuver. Looking at everything that was happening with a cold gaze, Michael mentally chuckled at this whole staged game. And now he has already turned to the system, asking to use a certain number of reinforcement points to develop his skill in playing basketball, equal to 30 years of experience. Meanwhile, Paul had already reached the backboard with the opposing team's hoop, where he was only thinking about what a beautiful ball he would now drop into this basket. With a cry of victory, the young man soared into the air, swinging the hand holding the ball sideways and upward to effectively place the ball into the hoop. But a few centimeters from the goal, the movement of his hand with the ball was stopped by someone's hand. The ball flew to the side, and Paul could not believe that Michael had just stopped him from scoring the ball. The spectators were no less surprised, where the fact that Michael was able to block the attack of the team captain caused a stir. Well, those three who tried to block the enemy stood with a confused look, trying to find out from each other how Michael was able to escape, where he seemed to disappear from their environment and appear in another place. Paul, who had already managed to land after an unsuccessful throw, stood and looked at Michael with a confused look, trying to understand at least something of what had just happened. Well, the new rising star of school basketball, spinning the ball on one finger, was just beginning to say that now it was his turn to score, when suddenly the referee's whistle sounded, where a violation of the rules was announced. After which Michael realized that not only everyone on the court was playing against him, but also the judges, which did not bring much joy. A free kick was immediately awarded, which was successfully converted by Paul, and the first point appeared on his team's account. The thrower himself stood and gloated, thinking that even the skills of a good game would not help his opponent, because all the judges, as they say, were bought. However, everything that happened caused a whole wave of indignation among the spectators, where exclamations rained down from all sides that the game was not fair, Michael's team was being condemned, and that this should not happen, especially within the walls of the university. As for Michael, he was very angry about the whole situation, where he mentally concluded that the players and judges may not respect him, but he will force them to respect the spirit of the sport. The young man's attitude was more than decisive, where with his actions he decided to remind everyone present what real sport is. Having prepared himself, Michael decided that he would rely solely on himself and not on the players collaborating with his opponent. With his first move, he took the ball away from his main opponent, surprising the latter with the speed with which he moved. And after a few seconds, the young man was already flying towards the ring with his hand raised up, squeezing the ball. The goal was scored, and Michael himself, in the best spirit of basketball, hung on the ring where he had just dropped the ball. Not even a minute had passed before another ball was delivered by the young man directly into the hoop. And Paul, losing patience, nervously instructed his team that they should simply surround the opponent, not giving him freedom of maneuver. And these instructions applied not only to the players playing for Paul, but also to those who were formerly on Michael's team. The leader's orders were carried out and Michael found himself in a very dense ring of players, which didn't bother him at all, where the young man, smiling intriguingly, suddenly jumped with all his might and soared into the air above the heads of his rivals, after which he made a powerful throw where the ball, of course, hit the hoop. And finally, he was able to attract the real attention of the players on the field and the referee, where everyone thought about the reason why this young man was playing the game so fiercely. Where the players were most confused was that they understood that this was just a staged match. And it was not at all clear why Michael was trying so hard in the game, following the rules and striving to win. The referee was the first to remember the events of his basketball past, where his mentor always taught him that refereeing is the basis of the game, where after the final siren the referee's conscience must be clear. 
where, having replayed these memories in his head, the judge immediately remembered the sportsmanship and respect for sports. The next who plunged into memories were the players of the teams, where everyone heard the words of the coach in their heads that victory or defeat is determined not by the score on the scoreboard, but by how much you gave your best in the game. And now, remembering this, they looked in confusion at Michael, who, unlike them, played honestly and made every effort. At that very moment, all these men mentally dubbed themselves such lowly fallen people that they should not play basketball or referee the game at all. Michael, having again taken possession of the ball and picking up speed to rush towards the opposing team's hoop, suddenly saw that all the players froze in place, not understanding what was happening. Spectators and fans were also shocked that at one point the game simply stopped. No one else interfered with Michael, did not try to take the ball, did not block his movements. Where the young man simply walked along the court, hitting the ball off the floor under the enthusiastic looks of the players of both teams. And then one of the spectators made the right conclusion, saying that this young man's attitude towards the game crushed the rest of the players. Jessica did not remain indifferent to what happened, saying that now everyone has witnessed true sportsmanship. And only Paul was beside himself with rage, not understanding what had happened at all and wondering if none of those he bribed needed money anymore. The game continued, where Michael Paul now had to confront him alone, where, of course, the result was far from being in favor of the latter. Once again picking up speed, Michael said that his opponent deserved to be humiliated by his disrespect for the sportsmanship in the game. Paul himself, looking at the enemy rushing towards him, decided that he needed to play tough in defense, which would allow him to maintain at least some respect. And so Michael, having caught up with his opponent, decided not to go around him, but to jump and drop the ball into the basket from that place. And as soon as he soared into the air, suddenly Paul, with a sharp movement, delivered a powerful blow with his elbow to the young man's torso. However, the effect of this unsportsmanlike action was exactly the opposite of what Paul expected, where something in his joint cracked violently and he experienced severe pain. The acute pain literally knocked the young man off his feet, where he screamed heart-rendingly in pain, at the same time indignant at how this was even possible. Michael, as if nothing had happened, calmly dropped his game-winning ball into the basket. Looking at everything that was happening, Jessica joyfully applauded, where the system immediately announced that the level of her location had increased above the minimum required, for which Michael was awarded another 10 gain points. Veronica and Angelica, who were standing nearby, also did not skimp on their applause, where, in relation to them, the system also announced an increase in the level of their favor and the awarding of 10 reinforcement points. Like all the other fans of Michael, Christy also experienced the most positive feelings, and the system reported that her level of favor also exceeded the minimum required level, for which Michael also received gain points. Michael himself, turning to his opponent sitting on the floor, defeated in every sense of the word, said that taking into account his moral qualities and physical abilities, Paul is not worthy to be the captain of the university team. And, concluding his speech, he added that competing with such a non-entity like him is disrespect for one's abilities. But all that Paul was capable of in this situation was to shout back that his opponent was just an arrogant, impudent man, where sooner or later he would take revenge on him for all the humiliation. Meanwhile, Christy, standing next to the fans who were actively discussing the events of this non-trivial match, tried to see where Michael had gone, who had just been on the field, where she wanted to offer him to quench his thirst after a difficult game. And then Christy's attention was attracted by Jessica standing next to her, who was also clutching a bottle of water in her hands and looking for her lover with her eyes, where in the end all four girls with water in their hands were left with nothing, since Michael never appeared in the hall again. He used the second exit from the gym to quietly leave the university, where, having avoided a collision with four objects of the system at once, Michael exhaled with relief, noting that if he had not managed to escape, then the choice between who to take the water from could have led to complete failure. Soon the young man reached his dorm room, where he took a shower with great pleasure after a difficult and intense game, both physically and mentally. Suddenly, his attention was attracted by the illuminated screen of his mobile phone. 
Picking up the phone, Michael saw that he had received notifications that someone Mickey Sullivan wanted to add him as a friend and sent one message. Having familiarized himself with the contents of which, Michael burst into wild laughter as this Mickey asked if the lone wolf needed a wife. Catherine Sullivan was known as the youngest actress to star in a global blockbuster and an incredibly beautiful girl. However, quite recently a scandal broke out where her reputation was greatly tarnished and she was threatened with a fine of 30 million. Having told all this, Mickey added that this girl was his sister and he contacted the lone wolf in the hope of help. Taking a sip of coffee, Michael inquired as to why his family was related to him since he proposed his sister as a wife. To which Mickey quickly explained that he wrote this simply to attract attention because he thought that such a rich man, like a lone wolf, would not respond to his message at all. After which he added that this whole scandal around his sister was simply a setup aimed at luring out money. And finally, after a short pause, Mickey asked if the lone wolf would like to buy out his sister's house. Thinking about what had been said, Michael noted to himself that he really had thoughts about investing his personal savings in real estate. In addition, the young man also thought about the character of Katrin, who apparently should have huge demands, like all movie stars. And that's all he needs, because according to the rules of the system, the more money you spend on an object, the larger the amount will later be at his disposal. And so, having finished his thoughts, Michael replied that he was ready to help. But in any case, he needed to look at the house first, which could not but please Mickey. He quickly took out his phone from his pocket, saying that he was now coordinating a time, thinking to himself that the lone wolf was indeed a very rich and worthy person. Mickey immediately remembered how the lone wolf transferred millions to girls from online broadcasts, and if he liked his sister, then the future of their family would be secured once and for all. At the same time, in one of the cottages on the outskirts of the city, Katrin was talking loudly on the phone, where the girl told her invisible interlocutor that she would not meet with that man, since there were not the most pleasant rumors about him. And when the conversation was over, the girl forcefully put the phone on the bed and began to take out her anger on the pillow, cursing the men who only think about her body. When the rage subsided, the girl fell exhausted on the bed, thinking about what she should do now, because she somehow had to pay 30 million, which, of course, they were ready to give her, but on the condition of a very close personal relationship. Placing her hand on her head, Catherine sadly said into the void that she only wanted to act in films, which is not difficult. Her sad thoughts were interrupted by the ringtone on the phone that was lying next to her. As it turned out, her brother called, who joyfully announced that he had found her a sponsor, which did not make the girl very happy, who decided that Mickey, apparently, had taken up pimping, selling his sister to the rich, which she voiced to her brother. What was said could not help but hurt his feelings, where he said that he was trying for her sake, and the sponsor would be a lone wolf, about whom there were so many rumors, and who was ready to buy the girl's house. Listening to her brother's explanations, Catherine, of course, imagined the image of a lone wolf in a very peculiar way, where she saw any rich man as a not very pleasant-looking, overweight adult man, where, having introduced the next candidate, the girl literally shouted into the phone that her brother was mocking her, and as soon as he appeared before her eyes, it would not be easy for him, which made the young man even drop the phone. However, quickly getting ready and picking up his cell phone, Mickey told his sister to trust him, since the lone wolf was very cool and would be with her very soon. After finishing the conversation, Catherine was again visited by unbridled rage, where she literally banged her head on the bed and screamed that no man could be trusted, not even her own brother. And so, throwing her hand up, the girl shouted that even if she was in danger of death, she would never go to bed with a man for money. Well, Michael had already arrived at the house where Catherine lived, immediately noting its excellent location, where the villa he bought for Jessica was very nearby. Approaching the front door, the young man pressed the bell button, and Catherine noted with displeasure that the new sponsor had arrived so quickly to claim her body. The girl walked towards the door at a leisurely pace, cursing out loud both her brother and the one who was now standing outside the door. Having opened the door, Catherine began to say in the most unfriendly tone that such an adult man should have learned patience. But when she opened the door completely, her speech suddenly stopped. 
where instead of who she expected to see, a young and quite attractive young man stood in front of her, who, having greeted the girl, said that he was a friend of her brother. And while Catherine was at a loss, not knowing what to say, Michael, in his own way and without invitation, walked inside, apologizing along the way for the disturbance. Of course, the girl could not help but note all the positive aspects of the fact that the lone wolf turned out to be different from what she had imagined, where she first met a wealthy man at such a young age and with such a good appearance. Michael, having already comfortably settled down on one of the sofas, in a business-like manner invited the girl to stop being embarrassed and sit down too, causing her considerable surprise with his behavior. Thinking that the young man had already begun to manage the place that he had not yet bought, Catherine nevertheless kindly offered to inspect the house, to which Michael replied that he already saw that the house was good. After which he added that the main thing for him now is not home, after which thoughts flashed through the girl's head as to what this guy was now trying to hint at. And the young man did not even think of hinting, saying directly about his desire to be Catherine's lover, where immediately after these words, the system announced that a new object had been added, whereupon reaching the appropriate level of favor, which was now in a deep minus, the young man would receive 30 gain points, acting skill and the usual percentages of what was spent. What Michael said was not voiced by chance, where he specifically decided to check how the girl would react to his words in order to understand her true essence and mood. Of course, Catrin perceived the young man's words as an attempt to take over her body, but mentally calling him not the most flattering words, the girl decided that now she would give him a test. Taking on a business-like appearance, Catherine said that the young man is quite straightforward, but she agrees to be his lover, where she, of course, has some conditions, where the first is to buy her a car worth at least $10 million. In second place was the purchase of an apartment in one of the city's elite skyscrapers. And the last point the girl named was the amount of $500 million, which the young man should invest in her, of course, as an actress, and not as one might think. Michael's reaction to what was said was far from what the girl expected, where he, delighted with such simple conditions, asked if it would be enough to have just one apartment and offered to buy an apartment for his parents as well. To which Catherine reacted with complete misunderstanding as to whether everything was okay with this guy's head. Sometime later, Mickey arrived at his dear sister's house, where he saw a parked car and was glad that he could talk to the lone wolf again. However, once inside and looking into the room, the young man was surprised to see his sister all alone and asked where the lone wolf, whose car was parked outside the house. To which the sister replied that if her brother meant that red sports car, then the lone wolf gave it to her, which left Mickey in complete amazement. And Catherine added in confusion that the lone wolf not only gave her this car, but also gave her money as an advance for the house. This also could not but please the young man who immediately inquired about the amount. Where, a second later, Mickey was practically screaming, reading the account statement on the screen of his sister's mobile phone, where the amount of 100 million was listed. All this could not help but please the young man, where he concluded that the lone wolf really liked his sister, since he had not even bought a house yet, but had already shelled out about 120 million, if you count the cost of the car after which all his thoughts began to revolve exclusively around the fact that his sister definitely needed to marry a lone wolf. The girl herself sat and recalled how the young man invited her to be his lover. Here Catherine could not understand herself, thinking that she should have been angry at such words. But he was able to surprise her by immediately giving her a car and transferring 100 million to her account. Where, despite all this, he didn't even try to pester her or hint at physical intimacy. Of course, this attitude won over Catrin, and she, thinking about the lone wolf, came to the conclusion that he was not so bad, and the system immediately announced to Michael that Catrin's favorability level had increased by plus 30 points. Very soon at the university, more students were celebrating the end of their studies and graduation. After the official ceremony, Melanie met with Jessica, who again started talking about how her friend should stop communicating with Michael since after graduation, she would not be able to protect her. To which Jessica objected, saying that he was not as bad as he seemed, but her friend continued to insist, 
citing as an example a recent situation where a whole crowd of girls were waiting for him with water after a game. But the girl again objected, saying that she saw it perfectly well, but in Michael's favor she could say that he did not accept water from anyone, but simply left, doing the right thing. Then Melanie decided to use her main trump card, telling how Michael, after her friend's birthday, organized a staged assassination attempt and rescue, trying to get her into bed in this way. After listening to this, Jessica said that it was probably time for her friend to go to a psychotherapist, and in general, reconsider her prejudiced attitude towards the male half of the population. After showing her friend an old news story where the girl and her father defended Michael, talking about how he saved their family, Jessica said that her lover was a very good person with a great sense of justice. And in the end, the girl added that Michael didn't even know that Melanie would be present at the holiday and therefore couldn't arrange anything. After listening to her friend and reading the news about the trial at the university, Melanie suddenly had the idea that she might have been mistaken, where she was not only prejudiced against men, but also greatly insulted the one who actually saved her honor and her life. And suddenly the girl abruptly took off, leaving her friend alone, where she shouted after her that she still needed to take a photo together. Leaving the walls of the university, Melanie cursed herself for everything she said to Michael. Some time passed where Melanie had already managed to get a job. Sitting at her workplace, the girl could only think that quite a lot of time had passed since those events, but she was still ashamed of her behavior, primarily in front of her friend. Every now and then she remembered the situation when Michael came to her defense, being subsequently insulted by her. The girl was literally burning with shame for her behavior and did not know how to pacify this feeling in herself. Her attention was attracted by the manager's voice who demanded that Melanie come to her. And the girl immediately complied with the request, asking how she could be useful, to which the manager explained that a charity auction was planned soon, where, according to rumors, the lone wolf himself would be present, and where Melanie should go as a representative of their company make friends with this rich man, and thereby ensure their future. Of course, such a request did not greatly please the girl, who did not welcome prosperity through personal relationships between the sexes. But she could not refuse, saying that she would try, to which the manager harshly replied that there was no need not to try, but to do. Michael sat in his university dorm room as usual, where he spoke on the phone with his longtime friend Mark, listening to the latter's story about how the Catherine Sullivan scandal came to be, saying that the Internet is full of materials on this issue. Everything related to the new object of the system, of course, interested the young man, and he decided to read the articles, moving closer to the computer screen. And Mark continued his story, saying that she crossed the path of some rich man, where several clauses were secretly added to her contract, which she is now accused of having violated, and also destroying her reputation. Michael, listening to his friend and simultaneously reading an article discrediting Catherine, noted that she was different from the majority in her environment since she had worthy moral principles. And Mark has already changed the subject, saying that if we talk about the environment and high society, then a charity auction will soon take place, where the cream of society will be, and where the lone wolf must certainly come. The word auction appealed to Michael, where he commented to himself that it looked like the kind of place where you could spend a ton of money and was worth a visit. But before taking part in it, the young man had to do one more very important thing. Meanwhile, in the house where Catherine lived, real turmoil reigned. Where the owner of the house and the object of propaganda defaming her demanded from her assistance that the resource with false news be immediately closed before the news was spread throughout the entire network to which one of the people present said that serious forces with a lot of money were playing against them, which they did not have enough money to resist. But suddenly Catherine's attention was attracted by the lit-up phone screen, on which information appeared about the receipt of a message from the bank. Having familiarized herself with the contents of which, the girl was amazed and confused, because another hundred million had just been transferred to her account. Catherine immediately realized that the lone wolf saw the unfolding information war and realized that her side might not have enough funds. Such a gesture of goodwill on the part of the young man touched the girl to the quick, and the system immediately announced to the sponsor that the level of favor of the object had increased. And then the day came for the auction, 
where the organization of the event was at the highest level and where, indeed, only the richest and most famous people of the city were gradually drawn up. Those who arrived earlier were already inside and awaiting the arrival of other guests and the start of the event. Julian, who was also there, asked Mickey what had changed his mood so much, to which the latter replied that now his family would be fine, since his sister had established a good relationship with the lone wolf himself. And then all those present spoke about the mysterious person of the lone wolf, who really managed to surprise so many. And Julian, after listening to Mickey, noted that this explains why Catherine started a war with such influential people, since supporting a lone wolf costs a lot. And while the rest of those present asked Mickey to introduce them to the lone wolf, Paul, who was in the same company, suddenly decided to leave their company. Where was the question about where he was going? The young man, waving his hand, answered that he simply needed to go to the restroom. In fact, Paul didn't go to the restroom. He just moved around the room and thought that Mickey and his sister wouldn't be worth it without Lone Wolf and Littlefinger. The young man's thoughts also revolved around the fact that today's auction is simply a distribution of spheres of influence for the next decade, where everyone came here in search of influential partners, and where a lone wolf will have a significant impact on the balance of power. In fact, Paul had been collecting information regarding this mysterious person for a long time and he had no doubt at all that he had succeeded in drawing up a high-quality psychological portrait of a lone wolf. Where, in his opinion, a lone wolf should be a wise, far-sighted, charismatic, and at the same time restrained man of respectable age. Deciding to be the first to meet this respected gentleman today, the young man left the hall and went outside. While waiting for this fateful meeting, Paul could only think that today he would prove that he was a worthy heir to his family and suddenly his gaze stopped on a very familiar figure, where Michael stood not far from the entrance to the gala event, where Paul immediately noted his very modest attire. Michael himself believed that he spent a fortune to purchase this suit and everything that came with it. With a trembling in his body, he recalled how he tried on these new things in one of the expensive salons in the city. And he noted to himself that spending your own money is not such a great pleasure. And only now, when Michael looked at everyone who was at the entrance, he noticed one strange thing. The security guards carrying out access control had exactly the same suits as the one he was wearing. At that very moment, the young man heard a well-known and disgusting voice that greeted the basketball star and asked why he decided to retrain as a bodyguard. And while Paul was speculating that Michael did not have enough money, the latter replied that he was invited here and in general they were not in such a relationship as to discuss each other's financial affairs. Thinking to himself that the security would now throw out his opponent, Paul said out loud that he was also invited and offered to go inside together. And so, when they approached the entrance, the guard demanded that Michael present a written invitation, which he, of course, did not have, which greatly pleased his longtime enemy, who began to add fuel to the fire, saying that such an important person was probably invited without an invitation. And to top off the bullying, Paul said that it's not a shame to work as a security guard, but it's a shame to pretend to be someone you're not. At that moment, a car drove up to the entrance, from which, shining in her indescribable beauty, emerged Melanie, who had arrived here on behalf of the manager to make friends with a lone wolf. And while she was walking towards the entrance, all that could be heard from all sides were enthusiastic exclamations regarding her beauty, which nothing and no one could eclipse. The beauty herself did not stop thinking that she did not like this assignment at all, but she still had to fulfill it and ensure a comfortable life for her company. And then the girl's attention was attracted by the conversation between the men, which was taking place in a raised voice, where she turned around and saw Michael, whom the guard was reproaching for trying to get into such a serious event without an invitation, to which the young man once again emotionally responded that he really did not have the necessary piece of paper but this did not mean that he was not invited. But the guard said that all the guests had been given invitations, and Paul added that only VIPs, such as his older brother John Mitchell, the head of the largest internet broadcasting corporation, could be present without an invitation. After which the young man, with an obvious mocking intonation, asked Michael the question of which corporation he was the head of in order to come here without a written invitation. But then Melanie intervened in the dialogue, saying that Michael had arrived with her, 
after which she handed over her invitation card, which contained an entry with the participant's last name and an indication of plus one. And while the guard was checking the invitation, Michael himself was surprised that this girl who hated him more than anyone in the world suddenly decided to help him. He received an answer to his question almost instantly, where Melanie, who headed inside, said that she was helping him not out of the kindness of her heart, since she had not changed her opinion about him, but only out of a sense of duty for salvation. Where she admitted hiding her eyes that that night when she was attacked, she really misunderstood everything. Michael, having called the girl overly self-confident, also mentally said that her favor would not prevent him from publicly humiliating Paul, where he was going to soon call the right person who would solve the issue of getting inside without an invitation. And so he smiling said that he did not need any handouts, where he was invited here not as Melanie's accompaniment, but as an independent guest. After which he recommended that the girl, amazed by such a reaction, mind her own business, since there was no longer a student union here, where she was the main one and meant something. Naturally, everything voiced greatly hurt the girl, who mentally cursed both Michael, who did not appreciate the help, and at the same time, all the other men on the planet. And all those who witnessed this scene began to speak out not in favor of Michael, declaring that this beggar had just been thrown a life preserver that could have pulled him into high society and which he so stupidly refused. Paul did not let up, saying that in the future Michael would have a very hard time with such habits. And the young man, not responding to Paul's remarks or to the barbs of those around him, thought that they could laugh as much as they wanted, but his time would soon come. Julian, who came out of the room, noticed the pandemonium around Michael. Something very familiar seemed to him in this crowd, where, having looked closely, he immediately saw his old acquaintance, a lone wolf whom he had already met before and spent unlimited amounts of his money on. Seeing how the second son of the Mitchell family mocked the lone wolf, Julian was horrified and realized that he needed to inform his older brother about this as quickly as possible, while something could still be fixed. John Mitchell, in the company of Mark, told him his plans to meet the lone wolf and asked his friend to tell him a little about him. To which Mark replied that they had very close friendly relations, but he could not tell anything specific about the lone wolf, to which John immediately said that his interlocutor was simply being modest. Their conversation was interrupted by a phone call, where Mark put it on speakerphone and asked Julian what happened. To which Julian very emotionally said that at the entrance to the auction, a lone wolf was stopped and mocked at him, which immediately provoked Mark to ask who was there so brave and reckless that he dared to do this. The answer was not long in coming, where the caller said that it was Paul Mitchell, which of course led to a corresponding reaction from the brother of the one whose name was mentioned. Without even a second's hesitation, John rushed to save himself, his family, and their impeccable reputation, where Mark shouted after him not to do anything stupid and to wait for him. But Paul still couldn't calm down and continued his mockery, putting his hand on his opponent's shoulder and saying that the guard's uniform suited Michael very well. But the young man, with a deft movement, threw off the enemy's hand, saying that his words meant absolutely nothing to him. After which, turning his head to the young man's ear, Michael whispered that even his high-ranking brother had no right to say anything like that about him. To which Paul immediately shouted that the impudent guy doesn't even know what position his older brother holds, what connections and opportunities he has, where if he wants, half the city will crawl to him on their knees. And for insulting his brother, he will now teach Michael a good lesson, where no one can stop him. Standing nearby, Melanie watched the unfolding events who noted that this young man in a white suit was only good at hiding behind his brother and family, but in reality, he was nothing of himself. But looking at Michael, the girl added that in any case, this libertine deserved everything that was happening to him now. And suddenly the crowd of guests parted, allowing John and Mark, who had arrived at the event, to go ahead. Where, looking at the stern face of Brother Paul, those around him speculated as to what could have angered him so much. Seeing his brother, Paul said that he would sort out this situation himself and his intervention was not required. But instead of words, John suddenly gave his younger brother a good resounding slap in the face. Grabbing the place where the blow fell, Paul, not understanding what he could do to deserve this, asked his brother why he was doing this to him. In response, John said that Paul had no brains at all, 
and pointing to Michael added that he should immediately apologize to the lone wolf. It's unlikely that anything could shock the young man more than the information that his longtime enemy was the famous lone wolf. And his older brother, without waiting for Paul to apologize, made one himself on behalf of his brother. Watching what was happening, those around were simply stunned when they realized that this young man in a cheap suit turned out to be that rich lone wolf. Where some began to say that he was beautiful in his simplicity, others agreed that such people really did not need a written invitation, and still others even asked for an autograph. And once again, Michael's defeated and completely crushed opponent stood on the sidelines, noting that this young man had surpassed him in literally everything, in music, in sports, and in his position in society. Where instead of becoming the lone wolf's first friend, he became his sworn enemy, here, Mark intervened in the situation, saying that all this was his oversight, and the lone wolf should have called immediately, and all the issues would have been resolved instantly. To which Michael, slapping his friend on the shoulder in a brotherly manner, said that that's why he didn't call, because his friend was too kind and had already done a lot for him. After which, Mark addressed everyone present, announcing that the auction would begin soon, and it was time for everyone to go inside and take their seats. Following Michael was Melanie, reflecting that she was categorically mistaken about this young man who, it turns out, does not live for show but is very modest, where, given his condition and position, he could get absolutely all the girls not only at the university but also in the city. And then the girl felt doubly ashamed for all her wrong beliefs towards this young man as well as for the rude words she had spoken. Grabbing her head, Melanie thought about how she could now fulfill the manager's instructions and establish friendly relations with the one she had humiliated for so long. Watching Michael go inside, accompanied by the richest people in the city, the girl came to the conclusion that she definitely needed to turn this whole situation in her favor. The auction hall gradually filled with guests who had arrived to participate in this significant event. Sitting next to Michael, Mark told him that today not only jewelry, antiques, and other usual auction items were being auctioned, but also land. And to the interlocutor's question, the young man replied that the city administration had allocated land for sale. Michael mentally came to the conclusion that there was simply no better place to spend money, where land and other real estate are always at a premium and are very expensive, which will be an excellent opportunity to spend money. The only problem that arose was who to give all this to and those who are now in the system. And then a thought that was not entirely trivial for him came to his head, where he, paying attention to Melanie sitting in the far row, thought that maybe everything he had purchased should be given to her. But immediately remembering all the attempts to contact her, which ended in complete failure, Michael forbade himself to even think about this abnormal girl. Suddenly, one of the guests, literally jumping on the spot and turning his attention to the new person who appeared in the hall, loudly expressed his misunderstanding as to what this person needed here. Turning to the entrance, Michael saw that his recent new acquaintance, Catherine Sullivan, had arrived at the auction. Proudly walking through the entire hall, the girl took her place without saying a single word to any of the guests. Inspecting the occupied seats, Michael noted a very strange seating arrangement of the guests, where David McEnroy, whom he knew for some reason, was only in the second row. After which the young man drew attention to what name was written on the chair next to his place, where the young man immediately recognized the head of the largest market in the city in the name Howard Madison, realizing that he was very much valued here as a lone wolf. Imagine his surprise when, instead of a man, a girl suddenly sat in this place, saying that she had finally found her place, Michael looked carefully at the girl, whose beauty could not leave anyone indifferent. And the other guests began to discuss why his daughter Monica, who was known as a rather temperamental girl who was not easy to keep up with, arrived at the auction instead of Howard. With his ears pricked up, Michael tried to catch every word of what those gathered were discussing. Michael was fascinated by Monica's beauty, and all his thoughts from that moment on were absorbed only by this girl. But suddenly realizing that all this could lead to her ending up in the system, the young man abruptly stopped his fantasies and turned in the other direction. Then John approached Monica, who introduced himself, saying his first and last name and his position, extending his hand to the girl. 
where his thoughts were only about the fact that meeting the daughter of such a significant person as Howard Madison could greatly help his corporation in the future, and if he was lucky, then things could also come to a wedding. Without any enthusiasm, the girl offered her hand, saying that she was very glad to meet such an influential person. But the girl's thoughts were completely different, where she noted that here, too, there was only pretense and flattery, and if she had known about this, she would never have agreed to replace her father. Then she turned her attention to her neighbor, concluding that he looked very young, but was already sitting in the front row among the most influential people. Turning to Michael, Monica introduced herself and then asked how she could address her current neighbor. But the young man not only did not answer the question posed, but did not even turn to the girl, which made her think that there was something wrong with her, or that she was not beautiful enough for him. Michael prayed that the girl would stop paying attention to him, because as soon as he spoke to her, the system would immediately work, where Monica would immediately become part of it. But the girl did not let up, first asking if everything was all right with the young man, and then reproachfully saying that it was simply impolite for him to behave this way. But John intervened in the situation, saying that the lone wolf should not be so distant, because the daughter of Mr. Howard Madison herself was talking to him which was immediately supported by Mark, sitting on the left side of Michael, who said that the lone wolf and Monica really should get to know each other. Realizing that he had no choice, Michael turned and told the girl his name. And while she was thinking about the reason why this young man did not express a desire to get to know her, the system had already announced that a new object in the person of Monica had been added, where, if the usual conditions were met, 35 gain points would be awarded, the firearm skill would be added and the standard ones would return 10% of what was spent, where Michael had no choice but experiencing inner rage to accept that the system had worked again. Well, Monica, carefully examining her new acquaintance, noted for herself that he was a rather unusual person and she would remember him.